going live. We're live, I think. Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations. Sorry for the really loud roaring in the background. It's like 20 degrees outside today, so it's quite chilly. And I've got a, a grumpy kitty, like... <laughs> I've got to go let the cat in, so I'll be right back. Let me double check and see and make sure that... Hey Kilburn, hey Katrina, I'll be right back. Any accident without the dogs out trying to let the cat in? No, the cat did not come in. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> um, Hey Lost, hey Jenny, hey Diane, hey Star, hey Colleen, hey Judy, oh great, it's it's awesome to see you guys. We're really glad to be back. Um, again, it's pretty loud right now, but uh, it's because it's cold outside. It's pretty cool. Poor Randy, he's out there trying to wrangle the dogs and the cat. <laughs> hey Joe. Um, hey Randy. Oh, he's still outside. Okay. Do you have to chase her down? Well, yes and no. <laughs> she ran to me and uh -huh. then I walked towards her and she's like, No, no. And it's hard being a kitty. Look back. Like, why aren't you chasing me? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Penny, we're doing really well. We actually just started streaming right now. Yeah, uh, we don't stream on Thursdays anymore. It's. It was getting a little too much to juggle with our schedule, um, so we live stream on Tuesdays to everybody on YouTube. We live stream on Patreon uh, on Saturdays, and then we um, are also doing our monthly auction, which is this Friday upcoming. Um, but yeah, so we hated to have had to have cut back, but it's letting us get some tutorials produced. Tutorials. Hey, Randy. Do you want me in Messenger, or do you want me just looking at the comments? Messenger. Okay, I'm in Messenger then. Um, but yeah, today... Whoa, wait. Is your thing charging? It is. I moved the charger over before the stream started. Oh, then watch comments. Oh, okay. Give me just a minute. We're trying to figure things out. We've only been doing this for how many years? And we're still trying to get it figured out. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Jim. Yeah. And uh, we do have, thank you, by the way, Daniel, for posting the calendar up on uh, Discord. We do have a calendar over on Discord, as well as on our website, kind of showing when's what, just in case you forget, as well as it has the times listed for stuff. Okay. There we go. Excellent, excellent. I thought, because Randy and I are in full-on production mode, because we're pretty worried about um, actually having any inventory for Anime St. Louis coming up in May, which I know seems like it's a while off, but can you please say hi to Mason? He loves watching you with me. Hey, Mason! <laughs> um, I'm really glad that you guys like watching our stuff. Uh... No, nope. brain fart, it's gone. Um, yeah, Anime St. Louis. We're trying to get stuff made for that as well as for the auctions and stuff. So let's go ahead and... Uh, thanks, Suzanne. We are actually... Randy and I made a bunch of these yesterday, so we're not necessarily going to be um, making this necklace in the stream. We're going to be completing the necklace in the stream, Oh, if that makes sense. So let me get the tripod situated. Nope, nope, stay at home and do auctions. <laughs> yeah, but Anime St. Louis is one of the really, like, I don't think I'd ever miss that show. Even whenever one day when we stop vending, um, because we're going to have to retire at some point, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, it's so much quieter. Whenever the heater's not yelling at us. Um, hey, kitty. How doth it be hanging? Meow, meow. There we go. Um, so I have my little piles of chains here, but yesterday Randy and I made 
a bunch of this style of necklace. Where this is actually the same as the one that I'm wearing today. Um, hey, Pamela. Yeah, that's true. It, though we we did weave the stars on Saturday in the patron exclusive live stream. <laughs> hey, Leah, how's it going? Amethyst for real. <laughs> So I cut a bunch of, I believe this is their two millimeter chain from the Ring Lord. And it's pretty kitty, it's just keeping me company. And then we have a bunch of, a whole spool actually of, and this is what the spools look like from the Ring Lord. Of, and this is enameled iron. You can tell because it's magnetic, which kind of drives me a little crazy, but I also kind of like it. So you can see it magnetizes just a little bit. Um, but this is their four millimeter chain, which that's the internal diameter, I think, of the rings. So I'm measuring off four inches. Of our larger link chain. But I'm opening it up. And then I'm attaching it to one of our shorter chains or smaller chains. And this I have six inches cut of. Hmm. Hey Deborah, how's it going? Oh, Randy, the dogs are still outside and I didn't realize. And they just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Z just walked by the window. Oh goodness. Yeah. But this is how I prep up the chains for attaching to the necklaces. Oh, that's a horrible noise. Okay, so I figured while we craft, uh, I could answer any questions that y'all have, and we'll just kind of chat and shoot the wind and have a good old time. <laughs> hey, Mandy. Uh, thanks, Nori. I've been trying to do, I really do like having my nails polished, so I figured I'd try, I'm going to try to do a different, or yeah, maybe not a new color, like a, like 52 different colors throughout the year, but I was thinking it'd be, it'd be nice to have like a different color every week, kind of mix it up. <laughs> I do. I use two styles of chain. Um, I found that this larger chain, the four millimeter, is large enough that the clasp can comfortably hook through. So I call it, whenever Randy and I are talking, like the jargon that we use, we call it the extender chain because we use it predominantly for making the extension. <clears throat> and so, like using this one here, um, it can, the, ch the clasp can hook anywhere along this length to make it be on its shortest, it would be an 18 inch long necklace or, you know, add on four inches, it makes it 22 or whenever we're in the booth, we'll just add some extender to whichever side and kind of modify it to suit whoever likes it, like to suit the, uh, the style of whoever purchases it rather. Um, but we use typically a daintier chain that's going to be sitting right along your neck because sometimes you don't want something very bulky there. So, oh, well, happy birthday to your daughter, Kathy. I hope you all have a wonderful day together. How does the enamel hold up on the chains? They hold up really well. Um, now, it, nothing's forever. Um, so if you have like very acidic skin it holds up really well but if you like attack it with steel wool it's not going to hold up the way that you want it to but i think that's anything now this also isn't a welded chain um those cost significantly more to buy by the foot whereas i can buy these in like 50 foot spools and i like it because i can open the links but being an iron-based chain, it holds uh, kind of holds up pretty well. We've offered free repairs on all of our jewelry for the you know the past ten years uh, out of the booth, and we don't really have a whole lot of people uh, 
asking for repairs. So I don't know if everything breaks and people just don't say anything or if hopefully um, just nothing is breaking. So this is how I finish off our chains. And then I'm just stacking them on. <laughs> I have a knitting needle over here. Um, uh, right on. Yeah, I only ever get my chain from the Ring Lord. I have a knitting needle stuck in a drawer that I'm just hanging all of the finished necklaces on uh, as we go. Whoa, a heat wave. <laughs> no, we hear you. It's supposed to get up into like 40 tomorrow. And Randy and I are like, let's do some yard work. Like, let's get outside. <laughs> Really? Yeah, it's next week that it warms up. Oh. Well, we well, still have... We need to do yard work today. Oh. Well, we're doing a super long stream today. Yay. Yay. <laughs> no, I am actually excited to be doing this stream, but the yard work still needs done, though. Bev says, I'm still trying to use up my supposedly silver-plated chain. It turned me green, which silver-plated doesn't normally do, so I'm skeptical about it being legit. Dang eBay bargains. Yeah, and that's something that... Uh, I've had a lot of success with the Ring Lord being genuine about, um, you know, they're, they're very transparent about what their metal types are. Um, they don't say silver plate being that it's silver colored plate. Um, and also Fire Mountain Gems. I've had really good um, results with. With just them being <clears throat> transparent about it, you know. Lindsay says yard work has to wait. Got eight inches of snow, enough freezing rain. Perfect day to craft. Right on. Ooh, winter is here, isn't it? 14 in Michigan. It was 13 yesterday. Shoo-wee. Crafty says we had tornadoes last weekend and highs in the 20s. <laughs> yep. Wait, you had tornadoes when it was 20s? Well, not on the same day, but... Oh. <laughs> I don't think that's possible, is it? <laughs> eh. But, uh, oh, hey, honey, will you let the dogs in? Thank you. So he's starting to do that bork that he does. Um, the chain that I'm using is from theringlord.com. It is their, I think it, it might be a 3 millimeter and a 4 millimeter. I really recommend checking out their, they have little baggies of, like, 5 feet of a design um so i really recommend purchasing the smaller ones and then like keeping note like i did not um of what's what and that way whenever you go back to reorder from them you can get the um the big old spools i was using that for these oh check these out by the way guys i was experimenting with something this morning for another tutorial and these are UV resin using some of the little birch leaf style frames. Um, gosh, I love UV resin except for everything about it. It's so stinky and I'm so bad at it. But I love the concept. Um, but man, like these still just stink. Um, I think I don't know if they're just not cured all the way or if that smell has to dissipate or what. But I was testing the concept and I wanted something that was very quick. But all the bubbles didn't pop, clearly, on this one. Um, but proof of concept, it does work. Um, it and, also helps with massive colds. No, it's just UV. Like, I don't think the temperature matters on them. Mm. And the other resins matter. Yeah. Well, those are uh, the epoxy, the two parts. Yeah. Yeah, the cold really does mess with that. But, uh, and I did, Kelly, I, I went over them with a lighter first, but it still, um, I think I didn't let it sit long enough after mixing the pigment in, but I really liked how these ones came out because I figured I wanted to try some that are just filled in. And then I wanted to try some that were domed to kind of get two different effects. Can you add some an essential oil for the scent or would that mess up the chemical balance? Um, I imagine on the bare part of the wood, that's still pretty porous, like it hasn't been sealed. So that would soak up an essential, um, that would soak up the essential oil. Bev says, try Magic Gloss. It's the most non-stinky UV resin I found. Right on. Bubbles give it texture, <laughs> right? And I figure for being, you know, just experimental pieces, I'm pretty pleased with how they came out. 
These ones I let sit longer, but with these ones, since I did the doming, this UV resin doesn't hold its dome very well. So I basically domed it, ran a lighter over it, and then popped it right under the light. Um, but yeah, so these were uh, a design of wood that came in January's craft along kits. So we'll be doing a little bit of wire wrapping on those today because I figured we could make maybe two pendants and a pair of earrings. He's like, I learned it myself. But I do have a couple more of these necklaces to finish. Hey, Mandy, how's it going? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if I can. Well, first off, they're kind of translucent, which I think is really cool. But it's a UV pig, like a glow-in-the-dark pigment. That, no, it's not really, it's too dark, or too bright. Even if you cup it? Even if I cup it. It doesn't really glow. Let me grab the handheld black light. Okay. Which you're supposed to be able to use this light to make it cure. I don't know about that. It's on its tripod, other than the house just shaking when I thunderfoot around. I'll try to stop bumping it. Okay. It's, it's as stable as it's going to get. Okay. Is it making it blurry or? It's doing this. Whenever you got up. Oh. It's fine right now. Oh, okay. But yeah, so we can charge it up with our little handheld black light. And so now maybe. No, yeah, the lighting in here, they do glow really well, and it's really cool, just you have to have, like, a darker room. Yeah, I keep uh, bumping the cord that I'm plugged into, Randy, is what's happening. Oh, okay. Oops. <laughs> ah, that sounds delightful, Bev, as far as UV resins go. That's honestly, that's why I've stuck so much to just the two-part resins, is once I learned how to actually follow directions, um, <laughs> they, uh, they work pretty well. Which, I have to admit, like, I'm kind of professionally embarrassed right now, because um, a couple of people, like, a couple different pages on Facebook are sharing my experiments with resin tutorial, which was literally my very first experiment with resin. Um, and they keep showing me weighing the, uh, the clear cast, which is very specifically, you measure it out by volume, not mass, um, not, not weight. Um, so I'm like, oh, I hope nobody like follows <laughs> what I'm doing. I hope they read the instructions. <laughs> Ooh, the Witcher train. Which we were looking at some of the different Witcher books on Audible, and I don't know what I think about the narrator. So I think we may just have to read it with our eyeballs. Yeah, right, Jerry? Well, the battery in that flashlight's like about two or three years old as well, so I'm sure that's not helping. So yeah, this is the, uh, the glamorous underbelly of making handmade jewelry, is the mass production of handmade things. Um, that says, I prefer the two-part ones, but when I need a quick fix for glossy stuff, that's when you go to. Right on. And it's called Magic Gloss. Oh my. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, we always get some interesting people through, I think. My husband has played Black Griffin's cover of it. Yeah. Ooh! That's cool. You can go by weight. Resins are done by ratios. On some of them that I've worked with, um, Pull Pro, they go through, and it's uh, the hardener isn't as heavy. Um, as the resin 
itself. And so my, it's, a, I, I just follow what it says on the bottle. Like, I think the Alumite uh, resin lets you, like, it does really well just by weight. But uh, it's science, so I follow the instructions. Magic glass by Lisa Tavalka. Ah, right on. Now, do you have problems with that shrinking? Like, away from the edges? I've let my coffee get cold. What life even is this? Ooh, Star says, is there a tutorial on the chainmail link portion? There is. It's our Celtic star flower tutorial. Um, and then this is just a little unit of Celtic visions. And then I just made some little wrapped bead links. Yes, aluminum, not much lighter. Yes. Yeah, this is all a uh, bright aluminum from Chainmail Joe. Yeah, we did it throw in some different anodized rings, and those are from the ringlord.com. Because we wanted to add some variations. So we have the very bright silver, and then we have some that have it's uh, the Ringlord's hematite toned saw cut aluminum. Which that's the thing, is we try to stick to almost exclusively saw cut rings. That's got a little bit of a. You can see I actually messed up here. I linked that link through that one. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get that open. Hey, Elle. Happy Tuesday to you. Bev says it can pull back slightly, so I plonk some on, give it a good minute to pull itself in, then top it up if needed. Right on. Ah, okay. Oops. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to need to fix that. So we are doing a giveaway today. Anybody who's interested in winning one of our monthly craft along kits, um, please consider leaving a comment on last Tuesday's live stream um, of the fairy house. And then at like the 45 minute mark of today's video, um, Oof, and it's loud again. Uh, we will be doing the drawing for that. So, you didn't have to be any kind of particular uh, comment. Just run over there and be like, type whatever you want. <laughs> Here we go. Just a I was in the hospital all week last week. Oh no, Amy, I hope you're doing well. Oh no, Daniel, I nearly banned myself. <laughs> that's, that's rough. Just a moment, I'm checking something on my... Checking something on the tutorial real quick. Ooh. Well, I do not know how to edit this while I am in it. Oh well. and belongingism about <laughs> I also need to finish this guy into a necklace. I really like those blue beads. They're pretty and they go beautifully with what you're making. Oh, thanks, Mary Hart. Actually, I think I got them from, like, Michael's.
Paul? I, I set my pliers down. Is that what set them off? He is... No, yeah, there's no... Literally, I'm at the window. Nobody's here. <laughs> Calm down. Calm your titties, dog. Hey, Randy. Are you checking Nightbot? Yeah. Okay. He's checking in on that, Jim. Thank you. Oh, geez, Sarah. I'm so sorry. Oh, Jane says, I wish we had Michaels here. I feel that. I wish they shipped internationally. Like, I get it. I'm also really hoping... Um, Things keep coming up, so we haven't been able to go and take a glass class yet at Creative Escape Studio in Springfield, but I want so badly to go and learn because I'm terrified of using my kiln, but uh, all I need to do is learn how to use my kiln uh, and then vent the window and I'll be able to start doing lamprey glass, and in which case I think I know how to, because this just has this brassy tone will actually um scratch off like if you attack it with like like it's like an enamel paint that's on there which looks really cool but you know whenever you're making something you you want to think about the longevity of the piece <clears throat> and um i think i know how to make that bead shape I, I don't know if i'd be able to make it so small being as inexperienced as i am but i'm really excited about starting to make my own beads and stuff like i think that'd be really cool to be able to you know not only make the bead but wire wrap it and I mean we don't coil and cut our own rings anymore but I think that's all right but just add another handmade layer to the jewelry components <clears throat> really Mandy oh that's really cool Ooh, um Amy says I did have a question about last week's fairy house because I bought the clay and stuff for it hey Don what's your question also, if you guys have any questions for me, or, like, I, I keep missing your comment, um, please uh, do the at and then Yvonne Williams, like how my channel name is, and that way it'll highlight it in orange. Like, you have to have the Y capitalized and the W capitalized and the space in there, so. Oh, really? I don't know if y'all can hear him, but Randy said if you just do at and then Y-V-O-N, it'll pop up with my name. Do you have to do a capital Y? Really, he says you don't even have to do a capital. Um, tweet says, I keep my kiln in the garage con connected to studio. Of course, I have a nine cubic foot kiln. <laughs> right on. Took a Lampert glass class last Saturday. I'm in love. Ooh, Katrina, did they teach you about, like, how do you, how do you put it, how do you put it in the kiln? Like, okay, let's go look at the kiln real quick, because I have, like, genuine questions, and I feel like they're the dumbest questions in the world, but I genuinely don't know. Okay, so first off, I know I'm not going to be able to keep paper on top of my kiln. We're replacing this with hardy board. It's like a concrete board um, on top of the metal um, thingy, and hopefully that'll be fine. Um, but, so it has the bead door, and on this side, oh, and I love these magnets that it has right there. Um, hmm. And then, so let's pretend like this rod here has a bead on it. So on this side, I can come in and I can just sit. And you can see if the, so long as the bead isn't too big, it's not going to be coming into contact with the bottom of my kiln. But I just worry because I'm like, what, do I have to do a kiln wash in here? Do I need to put in like kiln paper, um, kiln bricks under and behind it? Okay, so like little ones to kind of. Oh, underneath, underneath here, right on. That's a good idea. Okay. Cause I have like these things. Boop, boop, boop. So they're kind of expensive, but I can, Deborah says, yes, you should use kiln paper at the very least. Okay. Alrighty. Because, like, if I can prop it up, like, I don't know. So that's, I need to go and pick the uh, the teacher's brain and be like, hey, how do I 
put glass in my kiln. Like, which I feel just so ignorant and new to this, which is kind of exciting. But then also on this side, there's no little thingy to sit it on. Yeah. We don't know what we're gonna... This is my bluebird. So that's what I'm gonna name her. Um, just bluebird. <clears throat> but it is the Bluebird XL. Yes, you can use the fire bricks to prop up the bead sticks right on. You can actually just set them and stack them on top of each other. <gasps> Until I get very um, used to the programming and stuff, I don't want to risk melting the beads together. Um, but I am crazy stinking excited. We haven't yet, which is why this is not plugged in and it's not working. Um, we are doing another uh, live auction this Friday. Hopefully that will go towards funding the uh, the rewire and some of the other different things that we need to do just around the house. Get a little rack for the back of the kiln, which will hold up the end of the rod for kiln blanket on the floor of the kiln. Okay. Oh, Jane says that's how you feel about weaving a noob and ignorant. That's fair. You'll need to install an electric 220 line. This one has a regular 120 volt plug, and it's said very specifically, but I'm going to have the electrician look at it and, um, you know, defer to his judgment because, you know, the guy that we had in, he seems pretty, pretty knowledgeable. Um, oh, okay. I missed a bunch of comments on this. Jane wants to know, did you build the fairy house you molded it on? Oh, um, I did not. The fairy house base from last week was, it was a gift from our friend Joe. Um, and I think she had purchased it from like Walmart or maybe Hobby Lobby or somewhere um, during like Halloween. And Thea wants to know, how thick can the Glowforge cut? It depends on the material. Um the Thea. Thea? Yeah. Uh, it depends on the thickness of the material that you're cutting in the Glowforge um, and the settings. Like, it can cut through 6 millimeter acrylic perfectly fine, um, but I've been having trouble getting it to cut through, like, 5 millimeter thick leather. So, I... Uh, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I'm still very, 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 very um, inexperienced with um, the Glowforge. Though that one I'm a little less afraid of. Uh, Darius says, yeah, I'd have it in its own dedicated breaker. Um, it, and that is the idea, is that we are going to have an individual breaker come in for the Glowforge and then one for each of the kilns. Right now we still only have the one kiln, but we're hoping... We're hoping to um, be able to have two. So our breaker box on the outside of the house still has a couple of slots open, so that'll be good. Um, I'd recommend getting a separate generator for the kiln, just a small one, because they draw a lot of power. All right, these are great advice, you guys. Thank you. I <laughs> just got your notification. Right on. It still stinks like you. Oh, it's because they're right next to me. <laughs> I was like, man, it still stinks like resin in here. Um, <laughs> um, Deborah says, I found lining. It kept my glass items from sticking. Very least three separate 20, 20 amp lines for all you just mentioned. We have a Glowforge too. Ooh, right on. I'm not entirely certain. I'm getting a really bad headache from this uh, UV resin. So I don't know. Still go to the breaker. However, I'd recommend an emergency pull switch. Not going to lie, I'm completely overwhelmed now by all of you guys' um, recommendations and suggestions. I appreciate it, but it's I'm very overwhelmed. You're working glass blowing, you don't need it because the glass is not going to be molten. The kiln fused glass, which reads the molten state. 
right on. And that's, I'm hoping, uh, whenever I talked to the folks at Delphi Glass, they said that I can use this kiln for fusing as well. It does get up hot enough. Just, you know, obviously not in the same batch of stuff that I'm just looking to anneal. And I can hear my Sam dog licking the floor. Oh, Daniel, that's rough. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, the um the kiln wash, which seems to be a very big bucket as um uh, of um bead release. Like, it seemed very similar in consistency. Hey, Anna. Welcome in, even if you're late. We don't mind a bit. But yeah, just getting bunches and bunches of, uh... The technology is working for me at last. That's cool. Getting bunches and bunches of necklaces made. Because the way that we're running production currently um, is we only have two vending events this year. We're in the booth, but we still want to be well stocked. Um, so we're making... Out of these 12 necklaces, six of them are going to auction and six of them are going to the booth. Mm, okay, that's good to know, Katrina. Uh, hey, Teresa, this Friday is the auction for this month. Um, some of the pieces that we have ready for it, I'm just going to show you real quick. These two will be up for auction. And these are going to be much shorter auctions um, than, like, we kind of, I'm not going to lie, we really um, burnt ourselves out on uh, <laughs> the Christmas auctions, just getting stuff made and kind of grinding everything out. So um, we're not going to have nearly as much inventory as what I would like, but we're doing our best. Oh, uh, what is your best all-time seller? Honestly, probably our Dragon Eye stuff. Um, I was say at this point, probably the Patreon packages. Yeah, though, yeah, our Patreon packages and like our dud boxes, it, it really depends on the venue. Um, like on our Etsy shop, it's probably uh, our digital templates are our best sellers over there on Patreon. It's our dud box or our uh, crafted on kits. Um, and then out of the booth, though, people tend to really like our Dragon Eye stuff. So it's it's an ever-changing thing. Like the market, the waters of the market are always, uh, are always, always changing. And yeah, that's even at shows. Like sometimes we'll sell almost just costumes. Sometimes we'll sell no costumes. <laughs> um, sometimes they'll be like, you know, we're moving earrings like hand over fist. And sometimes like we'll sell like two pairs. So, yeah, there was a show that we did in Arkansas the first year. We sold one jewelry piece and the rest of it was ears. Yeah, the uh, last year we sold no ears mm -hmm. and almost nothing but leather bracers. Yeah, and then the next year we sold no ears or no bracers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just sold necklaces. <laughs> yep, so it's I, I wish I could let you guys know. Like, oh, well, this is hands down our best seller. But, um, it's, uh, it's it just, it's so variable. <laughs> right? Well, which, the best advice that I can give, though, is, uh, whenever you're making something, like, we could have, you, you can make something your best seller. Like, let me get this uh, flipped around. Because this is serious FaceTime. I'm going to talk to you guys about some stuff. Mary Hart says, oh, my elbow. 
Um, considering what happened last year with Tokyo and Tulsa, are you even going to try to vent there again? If they didn't completely kill themselves, aren't going to have it again. No, we will never go back to well, Tokyo and Tulsa. Tokyo and Tulsa doesn't exist anymore. Do they not? Yeah, I don't know. We don't know if they're still a thing. Um, I think they're a different name now. You know, I think you're right. I don't know, but it's no, we're not going back. Um, it's to, as vendors, to be treated like, because we are, we're very replaceable. We are but lowly vendors. We're just the poor suckers who paid, you know, an arm and a leg to be at the event. And if we don't buy a booth there, someone else will. But what conventions need to remember is they're a dime a dozen too. Like, I mean, there what over 700 conventions in the continental U.S. As vendors, we kind of have our pick. We don't have to vend somewhere. So it breaks my heart, but we will not be going back to Tokyo and Tulsa after they brazenly stole our money. So that being said, um, that's what we were talking about. Um, how can you make one of your pieces be your best seller? Because it's so much of uh, what we do as professional artisans and business people isn't just having the good product. Like that's a big part of it. And that's my favorite part is the making of the, I'm going to keep bumping that and that hurts. So I'm going to move it. Um, stack of completed jewelry. Um, the biggest part of it is the marketing. Um, and that's so what we're doing with this necklace design because somebody will see it and they might see me like, oh my gosh, I really love that style, but it's not quite the right color. And so what we're doing here um, is we're going through and we have the same structural style, but done in different bead colors. A lot of the times we'll go through and be like, maybe I like it in silver, but maybe somebody else might prefer it in a copper tone. So by taking that one design and making like 20 of it in a bunch of different variations that's going to sell much better um out of my booth than if i only made just the one um it also you know you're buying the let's say the minimum on the ring lord is like an ounce so you're having to pay this much for an ounce of the rings anyways so if you go in and you make you can make like you know, probably five of these necklaces at least off of one ounce of rings and you you can use the whole bead strand so i find that it makes a more economical use of the um of the materials because if it it's difficult to like all of this um this whole wall of storage behind me um is all just kind of technically stagnant um assets like i need to make that into jewelry so it can sell so that we can get the return on our investment in the uh, material now that being said i'm a bead hoarder and that's never going to happen because i'm like uh oh this is my dragon stash this is mine <laughs> but whenever we go through and we're in production mode um we'll be like okay this bag of rings is for this design. These strands of beads are for this design. And by making 20 of the same necklace style, uh, we're moving all of that material. Like we're not having to store it. Um, what's going on? Ooh, pineapple pizza. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but by getting it all moved, like we've not only made it a better seller by having multiple variations of the same product, but we've also made it more economical um, or more like efficient use of time and resources by making a whole bunch of them. Um, so yeah, I hope that that kind of made sense. And something that can be really discouraging though for your product to just sit there and like I've made this necklace and it's been in stock for some of the pieces that we sold on this past um, Christmas auction. Like we had had in stock since 2015. Whew. So, but it doesn't go bad. Like jewelry doesn't go bad. So long as you're storing it well and not like, oh, I'm going to bury it in the mud outside. It'll be fine. Um, some of it holds up well through that, but not all of it. Um, but, uh,
but yeah it's once that jewelry is made you have it ready and I always try to have like a backlog or a back stock of jewelry um to yeah Anna says I have stuff in stock from 2000 yep um but if we ever get sick if we ever just need to take a week off if like an alligator eats my arm I still have some jewelry and backlog so it's kind of like getting ahead a little bit on inventory um so I don't know I treat it like um the backlog of jewelry that I have made is an investment for future Vaughn to be able to maybe take a weekend off which I don't do but if I, if I needed to I could <laughs> maybe <laughs> so but so that's kind of I hope that that's helpful on the concept of um making something a bestseller so it's like pro tip don't put your arm near an alligator's mouth you know in our line of work that should be easily avoidable um <laughs> florida man you can call that living, you can call that living says randy <laughs> but no just you know life happens um and so trying to like prep up in preparation for that but also something that we've found pretty consistently is that, um, do you know many alligators? A couple. Like, I like going to the, um, the aquarium in Springfield, Missouri. They have this giant albino alligator. And I would pat him on the schnoz if I had a chance. Um, I would not recommend that. I know, which is why I'm planning on having a backlog for whenever. <laughs> know thyself is the first thing. Um, but no, we found that in the booth, if we only have like one fancy smancy costume, it it won't sell. Because somebody will see it and they're like, oh, it's really cool, but I'm not sure if that's the one that I want. Like, I mean, it's really cool, but it's very expensive. And whereas if I have three or four big fancy smancy costumes, um, some like it like our our lizard brains start like looking at it and being like, well, I like that one, but I like that one better. I'll get that one and then it'll sell so like always always we try to have like more than like not like three to five minimum of a thing um which we can just have business chat now like I'll answer y'all's questions as best I can um limited of course by my own experience um because that's they're the way that I run my business might have run other people into the ground and there's stuff other people do that they're wildly successful with that I've never even thought of. So, um, but if I can have like 10 of a product, it'll sell way better than if I only had three, just because people will see it and they'll be like, oh, well, that's neat. Do you have it in this color? And I'll be like, you bet your butt cheeks I do. And we'll hustle it. Like, uh, y'all can ask our friend Yvette. She's hung out with us in the booth a couple of times. And she had actually commented. She was like, y'all work this. And I was like, mm, mama needs that money. Like, <laughs> I've got beads to buy. And like, <laughs> it's so far behind. I just got to the alligator part. Oh, no, Sarah. Yeah, go ahead and take a minute to refresh, refresh the page, which I actually think. <sighs> I don't even know. Like, Randy, you're going to be. You're going to be frustrated with me, but I don't even know if I monetized this video. <laughs> of course you didn't. Of course I didn't. It's just what I do for a living. Oh, Metatron says, you're my hippie mogul hero. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is I really think that it does take some business sense and like being marketing minded and stuff to be successful. But I, I think there's room for all of us to be successful. Nina saw an ad. We're good. We're good boys. Um... I got ads if that helps. It does. It helps tremendously. Um, I need to change my address on the order I just placed. Oh, no. Um, my Patronus, according to Pottermore, is a Manx. Funny enough, I have a Manx. He's a chip, but I still love him. Oh, Andy. Um, is, was it? I got beans to eat. I do. Oh, no, she said beans. She did say beans. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys, because I wasn't able to uh, to double check, and I was like, ah, it, I'll, who cares? Like, <laughs> um, no eating cat beans. Ooh, do we do toes? Okay. I know. Yes. Yes, she does. What? 
What? I'm sleep too. I, don't I love you so much. Face. Apparently, I throw tantrums in my sleep. Y'all, story time. <laughs> Apparently, Randy tried to snuggle me last night because we woke up this morning and I was like, "Good morning, my love," and he was like, "Do you remember last night?" And I was like, "No." Like, I fell asleep watching Sherlock Holmes with you. Like, and he was like, "Uh huh." You don't remember, do you? And I was like, "What?" Apparently he was trying to snuggle me and I was like, tee -hee, no, <laughs> and like throwing the blankets and like just having a fit, like kicking your legs, kicking my legs, and, like, <laughs> and he was like, all right, fine. Then I'd come in to cuddle him and then I'd go, no, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what was up, but it, it made, it, I made me laugh this morning, but Randy was like, mm-hmm, you cycle. <laughs> Okay, uh, back to, no, before we do more business questions, are y'all ready for a giveaway? I guess I need to get ready for a giveaway. Prepare thyselves. Okay, so today we are giving away one of our craft along kits. Red Cal says, I shared a bed with a friend when I went to DC years ago. Apparently I mumbled something offensive and turned over and smacked my friend in the face. She said, well, excuse you. Oh boy, that's amazing. Yeah, if you guys haven't yet, last chance, go leave a comment on Tuesday's live stream. You literally comment anything, just like blag -dark -dark. And like, just wanted to thank you and Randy for making me spend close to a thousand on chain mountings and tools. Seriously, thanks for the inspiration. I was like, ah, oh, you might not be thanking me. Oh, that's a big bill, but it is a lot of fun. Like, I love chain. I'm actually really in love with this necklace. Like, I didn't think, not to be this way, but not, I didn't think I would like it as much. Like, it felt, like, too, like, sparkly for me, but I'm kind of like, oh, mm. twinkle, twinkle. Um, you ready? Yeah. Oh, Randy's ready. So let's see if we can, uh-oh, I've snagged the tripod. I've come snagged again. da 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 Yeah. Nope. No? <laughs> <laughs> then why don't you stand and walk? Because it's so rolly. Uh oh, uphill. Okay, here we go. Because ah. <laughs> that's the most, that's like fun. That is adventure on the high seas. Rolling through the house style. Okay, so. Scoot, scoot. Um, yes, you do need more stuff, Jim. <laughs> 64 comments. Ooh, and and then after we find out who wins, should we should we just wait and they'll see? Or should I show them what's in it? Like should it be a surprise? 64 comments. Okay, 64 commenters. We are on random comment picker. And so go. go. You didn't get it in four now, it's too late. Shar Shar. Missed you live, but, but I'll watch the recording. Fairy house fun. It's been a long time. Congratulations, Shar Shar. Um, Daniel says, give us a teaser. Um, <laughs> because if you guys really want one of these, we do have them listed up for sale on our Etsy. So in this craft along kit, let me finish that first thought. Shar Shar, if you could send us an email at factorscreations at yahoo.com with where you would like for me to ship to, I'll go ahead and get this shipped out to you. Um, but speaking of also, uh -huh. um, if you won last year and failed to reach us, your stuff's gone. Yeah, <laughs> we it's, deleted the we're, pictures. We're, we reset, we we're sent out, on. yep, new year, new, <laughs> new, year, new giveaway list. Um, so but we're going to try to do better this year. Honestly, the people who didn't contact us were from like back in June. So. Yeah, it had been a minute, but we have some 18 and 28 gauge copper wire from Parawire. And then we have some wood frames and some little crescent moons. So that is pretty cool. And if you buy these on Etsy, since we charge shipping, I do sneak in an extra cab for you guys. Um, just cause. Randy's over here and he's like, you do, do you? And I'm like, yes I do. <laughs> Grow the beard. But yeah, congratulations, Shar Shar. Sorry if I ruined the surprise. I love you, Randy. Bye-bye. 
<laughs> there we go. All right, back to work. Um, though I do feel like I can't answer you guys' questions unless you just want to watch me open and close a bunch of chains. Um, <laughs> oh, what happened? But you made it up to me. What happened, Angie? I missed something entirely. Yes, if you comment on this live stream after the live is over, like after the stream is over, that way it leaves it like in the comment section underneath, um, you will be enrolled in next week's giveaway, which is cute. But yeah, so uh, if you've got them, toss them out. Questions, like, like business stuff, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, August winner. Oh, okay. Did I send you your thing? I think I did. Did I? I hope I, I really hope I sent you because I lost your stuff. <laughs> like I had my giveaway pile and I lost it in the rearrange. And so I was like, everybody gets a kit. <laughs> Panic ensues. Um, ah, Terry says I just ordered that. I need to change the shipping address. Um, Terry, if you could send me a message on Etsy with the correct shipping address, we'll go ahead and get that taken care of for you. Um, what is a good beginner chainmail? The weave that I like to teach all of my chainmail 101 classes is spiral chain because it's really straightforward. Like the hardest part is like the first five or six rings and then it's just re repetitive from there. So it's a wonderful opportunity to practice like your opening and closing. Um, and building up kind of your brain plier coordination um and yeah spiral chain and it's great for like lanyards or bracelets or necklaces or you can make it however short or uh, long as you like so uh deborah says do you foresee doing any more videos on electroforming i don't know um i think so uh it's actually as far as I've experienced, a pretty straightforward process. So I don't. I might do other videos on different electroformed projects, but um, I don't think I'll be doing any videos specifically about just electroforming until until I like learn something new. <laughs> like if that makes sense. Ooh, congratulations, Shar Shar. Um, two questions from Sarah. How do you sell things that are attached to, that you are attached to, and how do you sell without coming off as pushy? I don't have an Etsy and I don't want one. Gotcha. Um, I don't know. I'm very, very financially motivated. Um, if there's something that I'm very attached to, I'll just put a higher price on it um, and be like, mm. or like if it's like that one necklace that I've had for like 10, 9 or 10 years now, I just keep it. Um, but I rarely will get very attached to things because it's always in my mind constantly that I'm making it for someone else to take it home. Um, and uh, I don't know, we kind of... The, the only way that I think... Everybody's going to perceive stuff differently. So, you know, something that's not pushy to one person might feel pushy to somebody else. And in an online setting, um, if I'm just, like, posting something up for sale on Facebook, um, like, they can just scroll by. Unless you're sending somebody unsolicited direct messages, I don't feel like it's pushy beyond... They're being shown ads and crap anyways on Facebook. So you're just a, you know, personally, like a... a independently published advertisement um never win been with yours since first video starflower hey lavender um ah uh, bye mandy but then um so whenever we're in our booth selling though uh we'll make eye contact and like nod and smile at people like just to be like hey we're friendly yeah and then we don't say anything else until they've stopped at our booth and maybe you're like, we'll be like, hey, how's it going? Um, and they're like, cool, things are terrible. I hate everything. And I'll be like, nice. Uh, all of our jewelry 
free here is handmade. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And then again, we stop. Like Randy and I call it our NPC dialogue. Um, that you they have to click next before we move on to the next thing. So it's like um, we like, hey, how's it going? It's all handmade. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And that way, the it, vital information it is handmade and so that you can either be like oh I, I hate handmade jewelry and they can leave or they can be like oh this one intrigues me tell me about this it sparkles and we're like oh yeah and like so if they like look at something or like we, we pay so much specific attention to our individual clients in person that we tr we gauge our sales pitch off each individual um you know because we're individuals like I'm not gonna go through with Mike you know uh, carny style, you know, hassling people being like, hey, get some jewelry, come on down. And it's like, that's not what we're about. That works for some people. That's not what we do. And because I know that I personally do not like being sold to that way. So uh, the best way I found to make sales and consistently and to just kind of enjoy what we're doing is to treat our customers the way that the, with the interactions that I've enjoyed as a customer. I've had people turn on stuff for half an hour and then walk away. Yeah, that does happen. That's my favorite. Those those are our favorites. <laughs> um, but also, uh, oh, okay, this is gonna sound harsh. We and some of our vendor friends call people who do that bait. Um, because if there's even if there's one person just standing in front of our booth not buying a darn thing other people will stop at our table like if nobody is standing like sometimes I'll be the bait Randy will stay behind the table and I'll go around to the front and stand and act like I'm a customer shopping just because it'll get people to like snap out of their days a little bit and be like oh what was this bitch looking at like um <laughs> and so uh yeah so you know use it as an opportunity you know, maybe they didn't buy something this time, but maybe they'll, I don't know, like, it's never been a bad thing to be kind and patient with people. It can feel exhausting sometimes, especially if sales are very slow, and they're like the 30th person in a row to not buy anything. And it's like, are you shitting me? I paid money to be here. Um, but that's not their fault. They're out having a nice time. You know, so it's if nothing else use them as bait and give them a business card and tell them that you make tutorials and maybe they'll come watch a video um <laughs> but also that's how we've made some of our friends too is they were just browsing around uh shopping and it's like it, it's the, no one is obligated to buy stuff from anybody um so it's just because i want to make a sale i don't get to push that onto them so uh, a question. I'm making jewelry that will be eventually trying to sell, but don't get around places much, and I can't do craft shows. Any suggestions on what I should do to get them seen? Um, Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, a lot of people are having a really good time with. I personally am old and confused on the inside. I don't understand TikTok. It scares me. Um, and so I just look at myself in the mirror and I say, okay, boomer, you can do this. Um... <laughs> But yeah, using social, social, using social media to your best advantage, social. Um, I used DeviantArt for ages. Um, just having an online, whether it's like a Squarespace or a Weebly, um, or some place where you can take your time and be very uh, intentional and mindful with building your shop and building your gallery because like you know in your first year you might get like maybe three to five pieces that you're really proud of made and posted on there and then but come year three you could have a very extensive and impressive gallery um and it's it's a slow garden to start but everything that you're doing is planting seeds that some of them might not bear fruit until year eight um but you can you can get it going like you've got this like we started our youtube channel in 2012 and it didn't really start to take off until like 2017 so um baby steps but yeah social media is the best way if you don't want to leave your house just post it on crap find out about uh seo like search engine optimization. That way, if people Google 
handmade chainmail jewelry, maybe your store will pop up. Um, I also start networking through your family and friends. They don't necessarily buy a ton, but they may tell their friends and so on. Yeah, for sure, Lindsay. And that's with a lot of things, whether it's starting a Patreon or an online business or, you know, anything. It's your innermost circle of friends and family are going to be the first to find out and the first to be supportive. Um, and some of us, I was very lucky that my friends and, you know, people close to me were supportive. Like the lady, uh, Judy, at the bank. Um, bought my very first like for sale piece of jewelry, Judy bought. And it was a mess. It was literally an acorn strung up on dental floss with a bent up earring clasp as a hook. That's not true. It wasn't dental floss. It was fishing line. Yeah, no, you're right. It was fishing line. The dental floss was too minty. Um, yeah, God bless the duties of the world. Um, but it was like, and it was a $10 necklace. Like, but I was like, oh my God. Like, she's, I don't know if she knows how much her kindness just started an avalanche that changed my life. So, and that's, and now I feel just so overwhelmed and blessed with a million duties in my life, it feels, or, you know, just all of y'all here being so supportive of our work. So it's, um, we'll kind of hope, I, I, I have faith and I hope that that can happen for y'all as well. It just takes, you know, it takes a minute. So, um... Yeah, well, I'm glad to be helpful, Marissa, because this stuff is like, like how I'm feeling intimidated and terrified about my kiln right now. <laughs> like, that's how it felt to start our business. Only I didn't, I wasn't as afraid of the house burning down <laughs> whenever we started the business. <laughs> um, so, I, but there were fears, um, it, just starvation or living in the van, like were some real ones. Um. Would you be willing to do a video on how you do your shipping? I'm starting my website and that's one thing that's really stopping me. I will actually let you know right now, Sharon. Um, we ship in these boxes that we get on Amazon. We got a custom stamp that we stamp our little logo on it. Um, they're like just search like clamshell boxes or I think I actually have these boxes on a list um, on like my Amazon recommended stuff. But we used to ship in bubble mailers, and then I had done a custom wire wrap of a fossil for a lady that she had, like, sent me a camera, to, and she was being very patient and supportive, and I, I made it, and I sent it back to her, and it broke in transit. And never again will I ship jewelry in a bubble mailer. I need something that you can, I mean, it's going to have to be very abused, like, squeezing it as hard as I can. Um is not crushing this box. It's nice corrugated walls, super durable. Um, we do use bubble wrap on the inside to keep things from kind of knocking around. I always put the jewelry in a little organza bag. Um, yeah, like I'll wrap the piece, put it in an organza bag and then put more bubble wrap around it because I don't want any, like this is knocking around too much. Now I know it's just, you know, the, um, We'll get there, Sharon. Uh, I know that it's just the spools of wire, but the less movement, the better. We ship through USPS. Uh, we use stamps.com. We use stamps.com. Um, and I just use like a food scale and I get the ounceage and it kind of, it's very straightforward about just putting information in. Um, and then we ship it. Uh, it typically to ship this costs four to five dollars to ship in the U.S., but it has tracking, um, which, prices are going up. which prices are going up again. Um, and so, but, and it can feel intimidating. If you only have a package or two, take it into your local post office. Like whenever it's, whenever it's not like super busy and be like, Hey, I need to ship this. Like whenever we would ship internationally, um, we were like, kind of like, uh, what do we do? Just go to the post office. That's what they do. Um, I feel you have the distinct advantage of having a life partner who's actually supportive of what you do. I'm not going to lie. That makes a huge difference. Randy is like, I couldn't do this without Randy. Um, like 100%, I would have fallen on my face to, and not gotten back up. Like I still fall on my face a whole bunch, but he's always got my back. Um, <laughs> what? 
but yeah and so like whenever we're doing packages and stuff like used to if I had the experience that I have now <clears throat> rent to Randy <laughs> right um if I had the experience that I had now I may have been able to do it by myself in the beginning whenever um like we were only selling like one or two things a week and like it was very very small scale but now it's like with patreon and everything there's absolutely no way that i could do this without randy he handles all of our shipping like the shipping labels and everything like i fill the boxes and write the notes and get to do the like the fun crafty part he does all of the administrative um like he almost answers all of our messages now like it's and we're honestly almost at the point that we need an employee but i'll be I can't pay anybody like are you kidding me we're bare like we're we are barely keeping ourselves covered so <laughs> um if you fall down remember stick your leg out and look graceful yeah uh okay patreon is a subscription service um and they they leave a lot of room for creators to be able to personalize their pages and kind of what's going on so uh if are you familiar with like kickstarter or gofundme like some of these different things where like you set like a big goal and it builds up to it and then there's like you ship stuff out to everybody um patreon is like that but monthly so it's like um i'll be your unpaid employee no we've learned our hard lesson about unpaid unpaid employees and that is i'm an absolute monster to work for um like straight up if i worked for me i would have quit um do it love art fire art fire is like etsy um do it okay francis has said i post on art fire for a year with no sales evidently i'm not using the tools to get sales properly i can afford to pay for the extras to get noticed yeah and that's see i i have a fundamental issue with that yeah, Randy and I actually didn't go with Art Fire because don't they charge like a monthly? I don't know, but it was this was like eight years ago. But we went with Etsy because, but we've never once relied on Etsy to actually generate us sales. We use Etsy as the platform that we use all of these other social media accounts to refer back to. Um, like if that makes sense, because it's like if you rely if if Randy and I had relied on other businesses or on other people or anything well other people have been very kind to us we try very hard to not rely on that because that's when you get screwed over because this is my baby this isn't somebody else's this is randy and i's life's work and if we don't put in the work who's going to um so how do you handle custom orders do you have them sign off on an idea before you start pay up front etc um usually we will take half up front um and it's difficult because um like i'll go in like let's say person you are person and you say hello vaughn i say hello person and they're like i want a custom pendant i'm like cool what's your budget because that lets me know immediately right out the gate what we're working with and so they'll be like thirty dollars and i'm like cool do you have like what do you have in mind um and so now as they're talking about what or describing or providing reference pictures or they can hand draw something or you know just however that goes they convey to me you would be conveying to me what you have in mind and i would be looking at that through the lens of thirty dollar budget so I'd be suggesting things like aluminum or enameled copper instead of sterling or silver filled. You know, we'd be looking through the spectrum of a single gemstone as opposed to we can encrust it. Like, and so uh, just going in right from the get go or they can describe what they want and I can say, I'm sorry, the minimum we'd be able to do for that is 80 because they've specified that they want, you know, a 60 millimeter labradorite set in sterling silver with all this weaving. It's like, there's, I can only do that for this much. Um, and so, cause we've had some folks who they'll spend probably about 40 hours of your time on the design phase. And then you'll be like, okay, well that's going to be about $250. And they're like, uh, no, I can't do that. I need this for $10. And I'm like, 
Oh, you, we have wasted each other's time. Congratulations. You win. Um, but no, uh, so I try to not waste y'all's time and I try to keep whatever clients that we're working with, like to, cause it might be your first time getting something custom done and you might not know what you want and it's, you know, but I try to make it as efficient and clear as possible right from the beginning to kind of avoid that because, um, hey, day one. My forest does that. Find their budget first for a custom piece. Yeah. In fact, something we've done in the past is we've gone so far as to link someone to our video mm -hmm. because they were like, oh, it was about a dragon eye. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, but the pupil. And they just weren't yeah. understanding the way that the dragon eye was made. Yeah, and actually having videos of how our stuff is made was is really helpful because with like with our costumes and stuff, people would be able to look through and they're like, okay, right here where you did that, and they'll like screenshot it or timestamp it. They'll be like, can we do this instead? And so it just gets us and our client on the same page. And like communicating's hard. Like I don't care who you are, words are hard. Um, and trying to convey those concepts clearly can be really, really challenging. Lindsay says, thanks, I'm still hammering out how to do custom orders. And like whenever we're dealing with clients in the booth, we treat each one uniquely because that's how they are. Her hair says, off topic and somewhat random, but are you planning on making things with metal clay in your kiln? I'm hoping to. I have some metal clay uh, from Lisa. Gosh, I, I hope she's doing well. I haven't heard from her in ages. Um, but it can do metal clay. So, cause that's, it's a Bluebird Paragon XL is the um the the kiln model uh amber says you do costumes i do like i love i love making costumes actually um i just whew, i keep <laughs> i wish i had one of hermione's time turners or better time management um because oof, my favorite are the folks who are like so this costs this amount so i can give you that to buy materials to pay for your few bucks extra for making it a few bucks extra being like that. Yeah, uh, again, that's why we're like, excellent. If you want to pay for the materials, please visit this tutorial where you can go. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, make it for yourself. <laughs> that's a much nicer way of saying. <laughs> I know the kiln will handle it, but I was more interested if you had planned yourself. Oh, yeah. No, I am not a wizard of war, but, but that's very nice of you to say, Jim. <laughs> uh, bye, Nick. I've been watching your videos the past week as I've had back surgery and inspiration. Love your work artistic. Oh, well, I hope you heal up well, Carolyn. What's your take on giveaway when launching a company? Are people genuinely liking the business or just there for a freebie? I keep going back and forth on what to do. Um, I can't hold it against people if they are there for a freebie because, well, I like free shit. <laughs> like whenever I hand out stuff, it's like, I'd like something for free, sure. Um, but it's user engagement is user engagement. Um, so even if they're just there for a freebie, if they're still liking, commenting and sharing, like, uh, it's as the person hosting the giveaway, do it. If they're still pushing your product. Yep. They're still, they're still pushing your product. They're still promoting. If they're sharing it on their page, doesn't matter if they just wanted a freebie, they're still moving those numbers because with the way that like analytics and stuff mysteriously work online um is the more traction your post gets um the more likely it is for whatever platform it's on to show it to other people um angie says tutorial question do you have a tutorial on a ring with four or five stones i don't but that'd be really cool <laughs> i think i'm right in thinking you were getting into glass torch making yes very much. Um, I had made a couple, they're all the way up there. Um, I had made a couple of beads, gosh, probably around this time last year. It keeps doing that. I'm so fat. I keep breaking my chair. Um, I made these beads with a torch and glass Break and stuff. Away, baby. Break it away. It's under warranty. <laughs> um, but I didn't have a kiln, so I didn't know how to, like, I, I wasn't able to anneal them, but I really like making beads and I want to be able to put them in my jewelry and put the like sell them to people <laughs> to um there uh to use in their jewelry and just I don't know it's it's the most magical feeling thing I've ever done 
to use a flame to turn uh, glass in, like, to reshape it. Um, are you still doing electroforming? I am. I actually just pulled these three pieces. Let me hang this back up. Yeah, I'm just breaking it. Uh, I just put, pulled these three pieces. The cores are resin from a mold that I had made. But I need to go through. This one's still pretty shiny, but these ones got kind of bumpy. So I'm going to go through and kind of sand and polish them up. That way we can make some more necklaces. So I think that'll be pretty cool. Um... Vaughn never met a craft she doesn't like. That is true, Suzanne. Like, I'm super addicted to um, falling in love with new crafts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you want love? Yeah. Okay. Uh, fire, fire, burn, burn. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, there's fires and smoke has kept me away. Oof, Beverly, I hope you're doing well. Um... I need to get back to work, and my coffee's cold. Sorry, the heater turned on. It's very loud. Mmm. <laughs> sorry, sorry, just saw these. Uh, please tell me about Craft Along Con. Um, Craft Along Con was the brainchild that actually spurred right after uh, we got burned by TNT, Tokyo and Tulsa. So I was like, how how hard is it to put on an event? Like just. <laughs> Like, not to be a bitch about it, but it was like their 10th year. Like, you, oh, okay. So I started Googling it and I was looking at it and I was like, I, I think we could put on an event. Uh, and I started thinking, you know, what would be my ultimate dream? Like, cause as much as I love conventions and like the fandoms and stuff, I don't think I would just, after being to so many, I don't think I would just go um, to a convention. Um, and I'm like, what would make me want to leave my house? <laughs> like, what would I leave my house for? And I was like, if I could go to an event that there's classes, like I can get my badge and I can go to wire wrapping classes, torch work classes and chain mail and get to meet other crafters and like use people's sewing machines and like, like, a, a, an expo basically like like a teachers conference showing all these new curriculums and stuff but for crafters and that's how I found out about the bead and button show up in Milwaukee yeah kind of like costume college in California or the makers fairs that they have um and so it's <laughs> go ahead and be I can't wait for my cut right well and it's Oh, I, I've been very spite motivated in a lot of things, and I was very spite motivated to be like, well, how hard is this? Like, come on. Because uh, we've been to enough of them and, like, enough different conventions. We don't know where, and we aren't certain of when, because the idea, like, the big brainchild that we had made, like, Randy and I talking, was like, we'd have, like, 80 different classes. We'd need, like, at least 10 different teachers. But even if it's 10 teachers, 10 people teaching eight different classes, like, and it like and we instead of a dealer's hall we would have um like vendors uh selling the materials as well as like people could sell their handmade stuff and it was i don't know there'd be a whole lot of it was a whole lot of stuff and i realized this is too big putting on an event like that does take being a professional event organizer as somebody who is not doing it for their very first time so um Randy and I are planning for this year, quite possibly this fall, we are going to look at the venue in March um, that we have in mind that we really think is going to be is going to be good uh, for it. But we're going to do um, Camp Craft Along, where it's hosted at a campground with a lodge and with like hotel rooms kind of. Like the lodge has like 16 rooms and four suites, um, as well as like however many cabins. And then there's RV camping. This this first one is going to be here in Missouri. Um, and again, we're not announcing officially the dates or the venue yet because we haven't locked that down. Um, but 
we figured if we can make a weekend out of it where we can have like bonfires and you know everything like after hours <laughs> um but we're gonna have camp craft along um we're gonna try to go to bee and button this year uh we're gonna have to see <laughs> put me down with one other right on and that's we don't know yet how much tickets are gonna be um we don't know we don't know anything and quite frankly if people want to just show up for the after party just show up and camp and just enjoy the after party we're only really going to be charging for the class uh which we're going to be having like we've already been experimenting with um friday saturday and sunday's curriculum and uh, so again i don't really know how much we're going to need to charge or what so we don't know yet but it's going to be kind of like a uh I don't know, I just had a really major brain fart. Um, also, I probably need to put my phone in. But, um, I don't know, just like a, a camp, a craftcation. Do that, Randy? Uh, I'll bring the homebrew beer. Yeah, and that's because I wanted to do hotels because that's what we're used to with conventions. But so many of them are like, no, you can't bring in your own food. Like, you can't do your own catering, you have to use, and so, like, the one hotel that we were looking at that was, like, I'm not going to lie, was not the fanciest hotel I have ever seen. Like, we were, like, we went with it because we were, like, this should be cheap. They wanted, like, $38,000 for a weekend for, like, 100 people, and I was, like, huh, a retreat, yeah, Amber. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and I don't know if the lodge has a kitchen facility, uh, hopefully it would, but all of the uh, rooms of the lodge do have like mini fridges and stuff. I'm sorry, Anna, I think I missed your question. Can I ask how many in here would travel to other countries for craft events and pay for it? I'm asking because I will start a and b here in North Sweden and wonder if I should do something craft related. That'd be pretty cool. Do what? East Coast. East Coast? Yeah. Oh, um, I don't know. Missouri's, we're, we're basically the Midwest. Um, but the idea is, is that each year we could have this, if this year goes well, then we could have it in different regions, um, each year, or we could have multiple events throughout the year. We don't know yet. So... Sorry, I really missed a whole bunch of stuff. A craft retreat. Yes, we have a retreat here, but I am West Coast. Right on. The Midwest, aka the place where no one talks about except during tornado season. Yeah. But I don't know, like, it's pretty here. Like, we get bomb ass sunsets. Like, it's pretty nice because there's, like, no hills in the way. The stargazing is pretty good because um, it's very windy, so we don't get a whole lot of, like, um,. In Tennessee, the humidity blocks out so many of the stars. Like, it'll be a, technically a clear night, but there's just a little bit of a haze that if you can get, like, a cool, clear night here in Missouri, you can really see some stars. Um, if you want a road trip, it's like a 30-hour drive. Oof! Um, it is like a two-and-a-half to three-hour drive from the nearest international airport, but if, if you're going on vacation, let's get lost in the woods together. Um... Amber says, I'm in Utah, so it'd be great if you could come here. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing is that with the camp craft along, I think, like, the place that we're looking at in the ballroom, we can only fit, like, 150 people. Like, is their maximum capacity. And so I think, um, oh, I'm sorry, Marissa, I don't think I saw your messages. Um, give me just a second, I'll scroll through that and finish this thought. Um we're only going to be able to sell maybe 20 or 30 class seats um so just because i mean if you're going to be traveling and paying and taking the classes and stuff i want everybody to be able to get you know if you show up and you don't know how to wire wrap at all when you leave on sunday i want you to know and have hands-on experience with everything that i know about wire wrapping um so we'll kind of see how things evolve but we figure we need to start somewhere and this would be a great uh first step amber has been asking if you do a pharaoh style ring tutorial i'm not entirely i don't know what a pharaoh ring is but maybe i don't know i'm not against it for sure um red kel says i'm a long distance driver i can drive up to 11 hours at a time right on there he is 
Okay. Uh, it's just always making things fade through the swish. I noticed the workmanship is what costs more as opposed to the materials. I'm learning a lot by watching your videos. Right on. Yeah, and that is something that it's, um, at a certain point, you can, you really can only spend so much on a necklace, um, or like a ring or something in materials. Like, it only takes so much, so many beads. Um, but, yeah, Michelle, that really does help. Uh. I'll drive to Missouri from Pittsburgh, hell yeah, right on. And we're thinking as it gets closer to the event and we actually know when and where, um, we'll probably put together, don't do it yet, Daniel. <laughs> I can almost feel you getting ready to type on Discord, but we'll probably have a carpooling and rooming together option, um, like forum on Discord where people can, if you guys want to carpool in together or anything like that, or room together, or if anybody wants to camp together, I'd like to do it during a time of year that is accommodating to camping or we can at least hopefully find an RV rental place near the campground where if somebody wants to rent an RV and then come and camp in the RV that might be pretty cool so <laughs> right on Lindy well as as soon as we hear back from the venue um about pricing and stuff we'll figure out how much we're gonna have to charge for tickets and um put tickets up to up for sale so uh, I'm kind of really like scared and like butterflies in my stomach about the, about this new thing. Um, campground and RV parks, that would be good. Yeah. And this place is Lodge though, you guys, it looks amazing. Um, and so got a tiny home ready for the trip. Too bad I'm building a house this summer, but definitely possibility next year. Right on. Yeah, so we're hoping, we are hoping though that as we learn from this one, it, it might not be too much of a stretch to think that one day we may be able to do a camp craft along as well as a craft along con um, in different locations each year. Like, I don't know, we'll see. So, um, hey Randy, you want to keep streaming? Okay, I think I've hit my second wind. I'm going to get the camera flipped around and we will keep chatting, but I need to get back to work because we have an auction this Friday. Nina says, I'm too old to camp. My back can't, my, my back can't handle that. And that's the venue that we had found because it's like, I don't always feel like camping either. Like, I mean, uh, actually I do, but I understand not wanting to always camp all the time. Um... And so the venue that we're looking at does have basically hotel rooms attached to the lodge. So it's got, yeah, you would have your own bathroom. They have beds, they have mini fridge and, um, you know, it looks just like, you know, kind of run of the mill. Actually, it looks a little bit nicer than a run of the mill, um, hotel. Um, uh, we will not have vendors at Camp Craft Along. Um, at least not in the first year. Um, have you ever done a medieval event? We have, we've attended lots of them. I love attending like Ren Fairs and stuff and like, um, Lily's Wars and some of the different like LARPs and things are very, very interesting to me, but we do not tend to vend them because we can't get in. Uh, a lot of the established Ren Fairs are like, ah, we already have somebody who does leather. We already have somebody who does you know, chain mail. We already have a wire wrapper. And I'm like, all right, I respect that, but I am sad. Um, but we had vended for a few years at the Alabama Ren Fair, which was in Florence, Alabama. And it was like a single weekend thing. We never did exceptionally well there, but it was a lot of fun. What sort of things do you see there? I have one to go to in August. Lots of cool costumes, lots of great food. Like, it's kind of like going to um, a state park a little bit. Like, not a state park, uh, a state fair or a county fair. Like, there'll be, like, cool vendors and, I don't know, it depends entirely on the size of the one that you go to. Some of them have rides. They have some really cool shows, um, like performers and stuff. Like, I always love, like, the, the jugglers and the comedy acts and things and the fire breathers and the dancers. I love the bellowing dancers. The last one I Yes, there was, and I missed it, but I got to watch him tear down, and that was still fun. Um, but yeah, it has a little bit of a circus vibe at some of them. 
with all the cool performances. But uh, most of it is just a great excuse to get outside on a beautiful day and get drunk with your friends dressed up like romanticized uh, medieval times. Um, yeah, basically Natasha. <laughs> Uh, the Bristol Ren Fair, if I can recommend any, the Bristol Ren Fair is phenomenal. And I'm actually buddies with one of the uh, teachers in the Queen's Court. Um, she is pretty cool. And she teaches like wire wrapping sometimes. And she does amazing. So, but yeah, the, oops, the Bristol Ren Fair is pretty awesome. Uh, the Tennessee Renaissance Festival is pretty cool. The Kansas City was okay. I had fun because of the company that we were with. Oops, but we also went on like the very last weekend and it was like there were a bunch of like school kids around and stuff. Um, Scarborough Fair in Texas was the one that I grew up going to um, in high school. Was That was the one that uh, I would go with my friend and her family and that was a lot of fun. Uh, though I've also heard really good things about the Texas Renaissance Fair do you think? Is that like in Austin or something? Uh, D says, so there's an RV park nearby. Uh, the campground that we're looking at actually has like 40 RV hookup spots. So 40 camp spots with RV hookup. 40 camp spots with RV hookup. But they're, they're definitely designed that you can like, it's got like a, a concrete slab and stuff that you can back up on yeah. with like water, electric and sewer hookup. Um, but again, uh, oops, I did that wrong. As we get, once we get a few things finalized, we'll make announcements. We do have, you can go to craftalongcon.com and sign up for our newsletter. And once we get things in the works, that is where we will be uh, sending out information pertinent to that. Doo, doo, doo. Ooh, right on. I've been to the Minnesota Run Fest, had a great time. Very cool. I've never been to that one, but I mean, honestly, if you come equipped with like, bring some drinking water, bring like a hat or a sunbrella and some sunblock, like just something to protect yourself from the elements, um, and comfortable shoes, and a little bit of spending money for a turkey leg and the vendors, and you're gonna have a fantastic time of whatever Ren Fair you go to. Ah, oh, thanks, Sharon. Yeah. But they're kind of vague on it. So I don't know if I can bring my alpacas. No, I mean I, I don't know how many of them are pet friendly. Gotcha. But yeah, the I mean the place that we're looking at is a state park, so it follows suit of most um state parks, I think, that we've camped at. But we were gonna try and go uh camping there ourselves just to experience it. Um and also, we're probably going to end up having to sign some paperwork if it actually goes through. So, hooey. Oh, I got butterflies in my tummy. I'm so excited. Um, uh, hello from Stanford, Connecticut. I love your work in Detroit. All right. Well, thank you, Rachel. What are those cats doing? <laughs> And I cannot for the life of me get this ring open. There we go. Hey Dee, she says, do you have a tutorial on the moon-shaped stone that is beside the green gems? Um, I do not. We actually wrapped this one in a live stream. Um, possibly time is a construct. Um, but oh, was it? Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, the little moon cabochons that I use are made in the same way that I make all of my other clay and resin cabs. I just cut it out moon shaped. So, ah. We're on our last necklace and then we can make something else. Fake dog. <laughs> and these things are the stinkiest. I don't think I'm going to use UV this UV resin again. It is pungent, um, but they're very pretty. I really like the wood and resin look. Oof. Oh, yeah, this is they stinky. Camp spots that are wheelchair accessible. They do have some, well, all of the rooms are wheelchair accessible. 
And then all of the RV spots are wheelchair accessible. But they only have one of the walk-in spots was wheelchair accessible. Yeah. As far as the rooms go, I don't know how many are handy. Ah, handicapped bathrooms? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. But yeah, again, once we figure it out, um, we'll be able to post... And then, because uh, with the event, what we're hoping for is that Randy and I don't really want to be responsible for, like, booking the rooms or telling you guys what and where to eat or anything like that. Like, we're providing, hey guys, at this venue, we're doing this thing. And then kind of the rest of it is your weekend and your trip and you can do whatever you feel like. Um, so... Uh, we'll kind of go from there and figure it out. This is those wooden earrings turned out very pretty, even though they are sticky. Well, thank you. I think whenever I make them out of some regular resin, um, we'll go ahead and not have them be stinky. Night, Nina. Night, night, Nina. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> right on. Well, I'm glad to have you guys hanging out with me while we, while I work. Crafting can be pretty lonely business. It is not very conducive to a social life. Um, eat boop. And I either forgot to put chains on one or more likely... I cut one too many segments of chain. What is the chain that you keep taking rings off of? This is the four millimeter silver toned enameled iron from the Ring Lord. Um, and I'm just using the little, it's the same metal tone. So I'm using it to attach stuff. And then also, um, it's the extender chain, because I'll show you. I don't know, that's a motorcycle. Hmm. I was like, how long does it take to drag the trash to the curb? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was hearing it for a while. Gotcha. Hey, Randy, uh, is the heater still set? It should be. It is cold. It is 68. Okay. Okay. <gasps> Red Kels is thinking of reinstalling The Sims 3. Oh, oh my gosh. It's, that is, oh, The Sims is awesome. The Sims 3 is the best thing in the whole wide world. I'm going to cut you off for a second. Yeah? Mr. Daniels has done a fantastic job. Do you want me to go in there and work? Sure. Like, I, I haven't done anything. Yeah. Uh, and you can use my tablet, too, to look at questions. Well, I mean, you if you want. That. Right on. Ooh, Metatron says, I used to tat in public all the time. I met so many people. Right on. What were the size rings you used again for the Celtic pendants you're making? I remember 16, 5 16, 18, 3 16. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to write it down real quick. Because that way you might be able to, like, screenshot it or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, we use. this is the clay machine that we use. Oh, you okay? Mm -hmm. Um, it is very good. I like it. We go through like two, sometimes three a year, but we crank a lot of clay and we do not coddle it. Okay, so we use five of the 18 gauge one eighth inch. Those are the smallest ones on the tips. Do you want like a darker pencil or actual paper? No, this is life now. Okay. Yeah, Randy bumped into... I have turned the house into a maze of just destruction. Um, we use one of the 16 gauge 1 fourth inch. That's the ring that we use for the very center. We use 15 
of these 16 gauge 5 16 those are what we use on these outer pedals and then we use uh, of course somebody 10 20 huh that's of course somebody messages me now well yeah um 25 does that sound right randy huh what 25 of the persian bubble um yes okay 25 of no, the 18 20. gauge 3 16 well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten on the outer, ten in the middle. Yeah, you're right, twenty-five. Okay. So yeah, so that's how we make. Those are what we use for those ones. It's great chatting. I really have to get going. Need to find something for late lunch or early dinner. Right on, Mary. Thanks for hanging out. But yeah, Whoop. so you can screenshot that, Diane. <laughs> And zooming back out. Oh, so my Randy's gonna be crafting with me today. Well, I've got more bracelets to make I since they bought us out. Yes. <laughs> back at Christmas. And this was Char Char's? Yeah. But yeah, I need to do a tutorial on these guys because I think what I'm going to do. Whew, yeah, no, it's still just so stinky. <laughs> well, you don't stick it up your nose. <laughs> well, I can't smell. <laughs> I know, but it's still noxious fumes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes your toenails itch. <laughs> Oh, I've missed you crapping with me. Crapping with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, um, I, I have I have missed you sharing the work table with me, especially during live streams. Do you want to get side-by-side -side toilets one day for when we're old? So we have shit chat? Yeah, we can have shit chat. And, you know, a complete elimination of personal space and privacy. No, that would be if it's somehow, like, two in the same. <laughs> two in the same. <laughs> that would be a complete and total invasion. I just, I just want to wear you like a jacket. Like, just, just let me have this. <laughs> Bye, Jim. Bye, Mary. Not gonna lie, I cannot see any of Yeah, and Daniel's just three question marks. <laughs> I just craft my pants. <laughs> this is a bad. Oh goodness. Okay. Should I just put this straight to a chain and call it done? Yeah. No. No? No. What no. do you got? Because, like, maybe some green. No, blue. these guys are for earrings. I understand that. But, like, others. Okay. Well, guys, time to start rummaging for beads. You know. Because beads. And maybe a yellow or a gold or something. I think I'm going to go for that peacocky blade. I don't know what's going on in chat. All I read is no, yes, no. <laughs> Randy is right. <laughs> Today on TMI, Randy and Vaughn co pooping. <laughs> co pooping. Yay yeah, or nay? You decide. Uh, the measurements you gave on the rings is that the inner or outer dimensions? Inner diameters. And that's for the most part, I think every time we've ever gone ring shopping, uh, they have that's like kind of standardized. It's the wire gauge and the inner ring diameter. Okay, so rummaging through my scrap pile. 
what was our last meals? Our last day meals. Uh, what? What did I eat yesterday? Ooh. I don't know. Did we eat yesterday? I mean, I know we did. You ate some popcorn? Hell yeah, I finished your popcorn because you yep. fell asleep. I did. Thank you. Um, did I not feed you? Uh, you ate a bowl of cereal. Yes. Oh, we had uh, that questionable shrimp. shrimp. It was it questionable. I mean, you got sick. I was fine. I think the scallops, because I didn't eat any of the scallops. Yeah, I ate a whole bag. <laughs> you ate a whole bag of scallops. Um. You know that shrimp was actually really good because mm -hmm. I made like I deglazed the skillet that we, we had like garlic butter sauteed shrimp um I deglazed the skillet with some like uh cream heavy cream Ooh. yeah I could feel my arteries fogging it was decadent have a crumb you can turn that more if you want the worst part of the jump ring sizes is whether the wire gauge is AWG or SWG. Yeah, I still haven't figured that part out, Sparky. Um, something that I could recommend is if you're ever at like a store and you're shopping, have a key ring that you have closed the other rings that you like to use onto. Um, and that way you can be like, I need this size. Um, so almost like a, uh, a sample swatch. Is that kind of like going to the store with a burnt out bulb so that you buy the kind of yeah which we do <laughs> we do we do that yes we do do so this is 16 gauge wire and it fits through my little beads just fine and these are glass your last meal before you croak Ooh. Oh, well, um, hopefully not a bag of <laughs> scallions. <laughs> Questionably bag cooked. Of, no, they were cooked well. They were just old. They, why do I keep saying scallions? They're not scallions. Scallops. Scallops. Ooh, what do I want for my scallions? last meal? Scallions. What is that? My last meal is going to take about That's a week. Onions, isn't it? Like, I don't know. And it changes. I don't like k fry seed gravy as much as I used to. Like, used to, that was, like, top of the list. Because I wanted a bucket of Kentucky Fried Gravy. Um, but now I'm like, I don't know. Oh, holy crap, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. It has been a long time. <laughs> Have you been, Designs? What do you think of that bead with it, Randy? Yeah, that's actually really good. Now, the thing is, is this is this is the only size that I have of mm -hmm. these beads. So, what if I just do one bead and then the chain? Would that be acceptable? One bead? How many of those beads do you have? I don't know. Do you have five? Probably. Should I do five on each side? Side? Oh, I was talking about down this area. Oh, dingle dangling. Yeah, dingle dangles. Um... No, I don't want that for a dangle dangle. I've got some dagger beads. <laughs> okay, do a dagger bead. Okay. Uh, yes, five. Dagger beads? No. Beads but on each also side? Yes. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Making me crank here, boo. Then I can poop like royalty. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's happening? Who got let go? What? Oh, laid off again. Oh no. Who? Uh, designs by L. Lori, oh. I think. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because like I'll think that I know my friends' names, but I'll be wrong. <laughs> <Dickle -dickles. laughs> well, I'm glad you think that we're funny, Bev. <laughs> They're calling you a slave driver. They finally see you for who you are. Mm -hmm. No. 
Randy is not a slave driver. He's a slave driver only in the sense that he makes me, like, I don't know, do things correctly the first time sometimes. <laughs> he saves me from myself. If he can catch me in time <laughs> and make me follow instructions. <laughs> it's that second part that's the hardest. Yeah. What are those green beads? I have no idea. They're like glass. I know they're glass. Yeah, they're glass. But I don't know where I got them. I think I got them from Jim, possibly, or maybe Flower down in Florida. I don't know. But they're pretty. If yeah, you wanted beads like be this, I would. Hmm? They might be from Jim. Maybe. Jim says there's a lot of beautiful stuff. What size and style chain are you using? Um, They're using the mechanized style. This is mechanized. It's not a <laughs> curb chain. It's just like there's not a curve to it. They're just ovals, oval links. Um, and it, this is a three millimeter enameled iron from the Ring Lord, and this is the four millimeter. Hey, Mr. Tambourine. Jim is James here in chat. Do. You can do exclamation point Jim, and it'll give you the info to his bead shop. Or excited mark. Jim. Excited mark. You know, depending on if he was taught right or not. We're educated so good. I went to public school. What do you mean he's not here? He was here earlier. Oh, yeah, he left, didn't he? What? Jim is always here. When did he leave? He is one with the crafting. <laughs> I must go... My I planet needs me. My bead shop needs me. Okay, it crashed, but we're back. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to type publicly as Yvonne Williams. Oh, it's so close. Ooh, do it, Red Cow. What? Uh, so I'm, they're tempted to rewrite um, Let It Go with a, a tax time IRS edition. Right on. I'll have to check that out, Amber. I haven't been on Facebook in what feels like ages, but... Because, like, I'm not going to lie, like, it'll show that I posted to Facebook, like, my business page, but that was just me posting to Instagram and having it post to the other as well. Wait, did that post? Mm -hmm. Did it show up on yours? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay. Not crash cool. refresh browser. Cool. Ah, uh, thanks. So, let me dig out a few more of everything. Okay, so... I'm not sleepy yet. Dingo, dangle, shiny beads. Uh -huh. Ooh, why do you make that face when I sing to you? Like you're startled. One hour and 30 minutes until Sims 3 time. Ooh. Um, so if I do four more beads on each side, I'll just do three Did on each side. Did you just crash again? It probably... It, yeah. Glad you're that far behind. Yep. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How do we refresh? Uh, yes, that is correct. It's only. Yeah. yeah, I think you actually have to like close out of it. I actually have to close out of it. No. Mm. There, now do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's like a four Mississippi. Large? Yeah. Cool. Randy, my beautiful love. Mm. He says. Which of these should we go with? We can only handle one Mississippi. That's not true. I'm kind of thinking that one. Let's see. Um, well. Hmm. Hmm. 
I've got these ones as well. Honestly, the green looks pretty good, but yeah, definitely not this guy. And I'm actually pretty torn between those, like 50-50. I don't want to do the green because I want to play on more of the other colors. Okay. Yeah, I want to do one of those too. Uh, left or right? Ask chat, left or right? Okay. Which one should we go with, you guys? This one or this one? They're saying right, so we'll go with the right. Crap, which one was that? <laughs> one, two, three. Okay, I'm just going to be doing three nah, nah, nah. dangles, or do I do all five? Do all five. Okay. Hey, Mr. Dingle Dang. But that was left. Was it? <laughs> was it? Too late. <laughs> I'm just tickled pink with how these look, though. Like, I absolutely love that. Pick three, my lord. Oh boy. She's going rogue. <laughs> but I want the pointy ones. And so I'm rummaging through my scrap wire. This is actually kind of scrap from whenever we did the twisting wire tutorial. Which dropped like yesterday? Mm, I have no concept of what day of the week it is. Today, uh, Tuesday. It dropped on Sunday? No way. Yeah. It took that long to notify me? Yes. Wow. Yeah, because Randy was straight up, he's like, why would you have dropped your video at like, you know, six, 6 or 7 p.m.? And I was like, um, I didn't. <laughs> We're all like, listen, nerd. Listen up, turd. <laughs> 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 but there are no squirrel hands in today's video. There are not. This is not an option. Okay. Which I'm using a 26 gauge wire. I think, I don't know, 24 would have probably worked pretty well too, but I have it doubled up and wrapped that way. It is a little bit more durable. And then I'm just giving it a smush. <laughs> What's up? Oh, um, rabbit trailing. Oh yeah? Yeah. I'm building a Byzantine bracelet. Mm -hmm. And I remember how last time we were in Memphis, uh, Terry and Jessica Weaver were like, no, Byzantine's the hardest weave ever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I know I've taught both of you how to make this. <laughs> and Terry was like, well, I've forgotten because I can't do Byzantine. Mm -hmm. So that led me to the... It's not a good idea to say can't around us. Well, that led me to the idea, or not the idea, but the uh, the concept of having you put the camera over here on me for a second, and then being like, do y'all do your Byzantine like this? Which made me then go, y'all eat your McDonald's with the shell on? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. I love my chicken nuggets still in the shell. So this is Randy working. It is like purple. It is. Okay. It's almost like this window is not well. Don't blame it on my window. That's like, this is the least leaky window in the whole house. I'm just saying, it is cold right there. Mm-hmm. Hey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What do you have for dinner? Mm. I hunger. This is not what I read the first time. It's my secret. I'm always hungry. <laughs> if that says Byzantine is easy to me, spiral is the pain for me. I can do it, but I hates it. Right on. And the see the thing is Byzantine is uh, it's technically the first we've ever learned. So yeah. it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. <laughs> what do you think the hardest part about chainmail is? Is it learning the actual weaves or is it getting the plier coordination to where you can... Cause I think it's not the weaving, it's the getting the ring to go through where it's supposed to... Well, I guess it's the weaving. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I can know the weave, but getting the stinking ring to go through, like the, the angle of insertion is the hardest part for um... me. For me, mm -hmm. honestly, the hardest part was developing the muscle memory. Mm. So, like, memorizing it? Well, no, just doing it the majillion times. That's yeah. a number. Yeah. Uh, to, artists, not mathematicians. That's right. To get the <laughs> closures to be really good every time. It's yeah. I'm not doing it by sight. I'm doing it by muscle memory and... You feel? feel. Gotcha. Close it, pet it. Close it, pet it. Mm -hmm. And close it, pet it. Close uh, it, honestly, pet it. though, other than that, the hardest part was learning to weave without putting down. The Bye, thing. Metatron. Yeah. No, it's straight up setting my pliers down in between each step mm -hmm. eats up so much time. Like when I was going through making the links for the uh, Celtic necklaces we just did. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was doing the red ones. I went through and made each link from the beginning to end steps each time. Um, and then for the blue ones, I went through and did each step, like each single step on all of them before moving on to the next step. And just the time it saved me in sitting down and picking up my pliers mm -hmm. was like, it took me literally like half as long. So let me ask you, Yvette and uh, Mr. Smink, do you guys do your Byzantine like this? Or do you start at one end and build all the way across? Because I'm setting up units. Yeah, I'll anchor the camera so they can see. It, watching chainmail weaving is very relaxing. I'm actually going to get it to where... There we go. Ooh, the child. I usually just build it end to end. Okay. See, I do it this way, and then I literally just put them all together. I can't actually wrap my head around how to do it in a straight line, if that makes sense. I'm kind of right there with you. Because I've been doing it for so long this way that it... Whoop. Every time we try to do it in a straight line, we end up making box chain. Yeah. Which, the other day, when I was making some of the other bracelets mm -hmm. i was i had to set my flyers down for something and i came back and i got like three rings in before i was like hold up wait, wait a minute, minute. <laughs> am i doing box chain because it kind of looks like i'm doing box chain depends on what i'm working on okay gotcha something like b2 i do units and connect okay and one thing about working with rubber rings is you get to totally cheat and bend the yeah the things around i actually think the rubber rings make learning chain mill easier and you can like tug on them and get them out of there that's where it looks like super yeah that easy always bunny ears. oh that's how you do that yeah okay so I went through on what you'd set up yesterday and undid that stuff on all of them because it confused yeah, and startled I me. That. I mean, it still got put together, though. Mm -hmm. These need set outside. Okay, put them outside. Okay. Am I closer to the door? You are. Is it better by my hand? It is better by your hand, my love. It Can didn't you... fall into my outstretched hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That looks great.
Thank you, honey. But yeah, my growing headache from that smell. Rap magic and moonbeams says we already put together 115 feet of project in 30 seconds. 115 feet. That is the power that is Randy. He is he's very good at chain mail. Yeah, because normally you're having to do it through there. And you're having yeah. to like mess with those two. Just fold those back. Fold them bunny ears up. In fact, I'm gonna them on every step because it makes it easy for me. Okie dokie. Right? So instead of asking why I took the time to pull them out yesterday, you just no, went I, through and undid them. I, I knew that that's just how you do it and you prefer it that way, uh -huh. but I was like, nope, oh, he's not weaving them. So I just did it my way. Uh -huh. I still got them. Yeah. Like yeah. I wasn't like, hey, why are you doing like this? Like, well, no, it's fine if you do it like this. It's no, just, not. yeah, it is. I'm not going to hassle you for doing something because you get it done right. So I just prefer it the other way for me personally. Have you worn it like this with the bunny ears? It's I, I use the not bunny ears, like mm -hmm. the flopping it open. Like that's a crucial step in my mental process. Of mm -hmm. like I pick it up, I flip them over, I split it open, I stick through. Gross. And if one of those, yeah, if one of those steps gets messed up, then I'm like, <laughs> where am I? New chain mail. Who dis? And this is... I've missed this. Mew and Mew says, I love that the live streams are longer and I can actually catch them. Right? If that says I'm crocheting a doll. <gasps> Magic says, it took me three days to connect six links. It was incorrect. Ouch. <laughs> Did you manage to sort out the star that went wrong in Saturday's live? Yeah, I already yeah. got that sorted. Is the same if you guys watch all your stuff and say, Hey, Lindsay! Lindsay Attenborough. And a big part of chainmail for me is if I've done something wrong and I'm trying to figure out what's happening, mm -hmm. if I stare at it too long, it just becomes a problem. Yeah. So I've learned to just throw it at Vaughn and be like, you fix it. Yep. And then if she can't fix it, then usually I've taken enough of a break that I can come back to it and say, okay. Fresh eyes make a big difference. This is what I've done wrong. And sometimes we've also just thrown stuff into the crap boxes. And been like, eh, they can figure it out. <laughs> Whoever buys this. You better not be filling crap boxes with those. <laughs> it's literally a crap box. If that's not the place for it, I don't know what is. I mean, it's still usable. You just got to take it all apart again. Uh, chicken and sauce. What kind of sauce? I don't know. I'd eat chicken in any kind of sauce. Yeah? I'm so hungry. Like, what about Szechuan? Szechuan. I don't even know what that means. Szechuan sauce. Szechuan sauce. It's all about Szechuan sauce. It's all about Szechuan sauce. 100 years of Szechuan 100 sauce. 100 years. 20 episodes of 100 years of Szechuan sauce. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. Y'all didn't sign up for this. The last episode we watched was the dragon one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we need to catch up on that. Oh, oh no. Force ourselves to take a break again. How do I make? Oh, how do you make? With a small ring. Yeah. I need to find it. I need my electric blankie. I'm getting like hypothermia. I'm getting malaria over here. Uh huh. Uh huh. <gasps> so cold, you get in the melanoma. Yeah. I'm gonna have to steal the rings that we used yesterday. What? Still from the little cool. baggie? Oh. <laughs> There's nobody here. Calm your titties. 
Oh, wait. There's somebody across the street. Clearly, they're here to murder us all. Sorry for the borking. You can turn it. I had turned it, but you turned it back. Daniel, you should know. The conversation always moves to food. Food is what Randy Vaughn's love best. Food is life. Food is life. So how many other people watched the Dracula Netflix thing? Woo-woo! No spoilers. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> well, I mean, don't. No, yeah, that's the next. Uh, we haven't watched Lucifer. I think that's a long on running show. Hail Santa! Um, it's actually, if I'm not mistaken, it's a Marvel property, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah, you didn't know the devil was in Marvel, did you? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got four, so it makes sense. They're just cashing out on all the dogmas. <laughs> money, money, money. <laughs> Why did you put so many mythologies into your <laughs> comic books? For money! money. <laughs> So changes from the comments. Randy, very good call on the five dingle dangles. Yes. You like them? Yes. Okay. Okay. You need to. Okay. I was like, why isn't this lining up? Because there's a twist in it. I don't know if that one's long enough. series got me playing the games again. I never played the games. Yeah, this was too short. You can read the comments out loud. So I can hear too. There I go again. Dingle dangles. <laughs> dangle dangles. <laughs> oh, that's how I got the name old dingle dangle. Is that, is that how you got the name old dingle dangle? Sure. I'm a dingle dangle scarecrow with a flippity flippity head. What? <laughs> Is that you who said that? Who this? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna shift it so that Anna's getting a close up. Oh, it's a, it's a song. Sure, everything's a song if you sing it. Yeah. Mm. Magic's like, Randy already finished it. It's like, yep. He's finished it and he's moved on to the, to the next one. One for the booth, one for the auction. Mm -hmm. So this was a wrap that we had done in the patron exclusive live stream. Time before last. Yeah, I'm loving the dingle dangles. These are dagger beads from Fire Mountain Gems. Absolutely love that style. Uh, forget me not asking, what other crafts does Randy do? Nothing. I do clay. Uh... You help me crank clay, but you don't play with the sculpting very much. No. 
um, you help me with leather in that Randy mm. will help me cut stuff out and he will help me finish the edges and like burnish everything like kind of put through the finishing final like polishing and stuff <laughs> Sparky's dragon prep is happening now actually this is going to the auction what Randy's working on will be um auction and booth prep so <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I kind of, I wouldn't wish Randy to be any different because things work out so wonderfully the way that we do work together, but he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to mess up, I don't want to waste any materials, I don't want to, you know, and I'm just here like, have I ever made you feel like you mess up or that you're wasting materials? He's like, no, but this is my own damage, so shut up. Um, so I'm like, all right, I respect that. So it's taken me... It's taken both of us working hard at it to get to where he's comfortable with doing these steps on the finished pieces. Um, but he also does some of the, oh, like, we can't call it CAD design, but it's the Inkscape design for uh, for the Glowforge. Yeah, somewhat. But neither of us have done a whole lot with that yet. But you do run the forge, so. I <laughs> pushed the button. <laughs> That's the running of the forge. But man, you do so good. But man, can I push that button? <laughs> push the heck out of that button. I think um, you're going to be taking that glass fusing class with me, right? I guess. Oh, man. You burping? Kippers. Ooh, yeah. We had kippers and aged cheddar for breakfast. So we smell amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think Randy will be helping me out with the prep work on fused glass. Like, you had specifically asked if for help with, like, picking the colors and stuff. Yeah. But once I get Randy started on a project, he does a really good job. But he definitely, <laughs> his main forte, uh, that I can just be like, hey, make some chain mail. He'll go and make some chain mail. So, what's up? Pooping conversation followed by... Kippers and cheese and oh my god, you guys are making me hungry. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Like, I have no idea what, I guess we can just have another prepped meal. Hey, you want me to cook you one? No. Why? I want... Got not a, leftovers. Got a whole fridge of leftovers. I know. Got I'll a make a huge deep. salad. I really like those salads. I'll have a huge salad and the rest of that cake. <laughs> Because <laughs> life is about balance. We have to bring balance to the forest, Randy. You have to force me to not eat that cake. <laughs> Wait, what? For more. Oh man, am I good? It's the circle of life, y'all. Dang! Look at his little rows of rings. Wouldn't it With be no bad if some rings. kitty cat? Oops. Oh, fuck. Shit. I was just trying to be funny. I didn't mean to actually mess it up. Randy. Eee. With no excess eee. rings. Dog is good. Hey. I just wanted to mess it up. Touch. <laughs> Don't stab me. I mean, I deserve it, but. <laughs> huh. Well, I was the mailman. I was like, is that the pizza guy? Did he read my mind? No, the pizza man did not read your mind. Oh. Right? I wonder how much money they would actually make if Domino's just drove around one random day a month yeah. knocking on people's door and be like, eh, I got a large pepperoni. You want it? I know you didn't order it, but... I've got it if you want it. <laughs> like the Domino's guys at a Dragon yeah. that one year, just walking around just door to door being like, hey, want some pizza? Dude, I am. Like an ice cream truck, but they sell pizza. Exactly. I would. <sighs> I would chase down a pizza I would, truck. <laughs> I'd, I'd waddle quickly and yell loudly for a traveling pizza truck. Does nobody do this? We need an. We, we need this. What song should they play? 
Just that tuba song that they always do. For like... <laughs> yeah, that'll be the thing. Call it Pavlovian pizza. Mm -hmm. Every time you hear it, your mouth waters. You hear the bell ring. Oh, Randy. Let's do it. No, let's, let's not. Let's quit our jobs. Let's As professional not. YouTuber artisans. And start a pizza truck company in a town with a squandering economy. We should do this. I don't think we should. <laughs> You're probably right. Let's move to the city. We'll hit it big time. Ooh, then we could sell pizza rolls. <gasps> yeah, pizza nugs. Pizza nugs. Pizza nugs. <laughs> Nuggy <-zaz. laughs> No, that's a calzone. <laughs> that's a calzone? No, that's a big, that's a big nuggy. That's a chunky nug. It's a calzone. <laughs> so you were already flushing out the menu. <laughs> I need all the profits. There's only so much food I can fit into my body at a given time. There is no profits. There is only pizza. <laughs> there is only chunky nugs. I'll take a dime More bag of pizza. This breaking story at eleven. <laughs> Domino's used to do that at my apartment parking lot. Really? What? That's amazing. See, everything's been done before. Yeah, the shut up. It's all been done. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's all been done. <laughs> Let's drive around in a van delivering pizza when you wait last for again. Yep. Yeah, I'm still mad that Dragon Con doesn't do that anymore. Yeah, it used to. Uh, one year, it was a two, it was two, it was a two couple to years. three years running in a row. Uh, in the dealer's room at Dragon Con, they would have um, pizza like pizza dudes. They had a mobile pizza making station at the street level, like in the parking garage, like behind gated uh, doors, so nobody could get to them. And they would just make pizza all day. Just mm -hmm. pepperoni. Standard pepperoni. And they would sell it by the box or by the slice? No, it was by the box. Was it just? Yeah. Okay. But they would send, when the pizza was done, they would send it up to the <clears throat> different floors of the dealer's room. And they would just walk around and sell pizza to either. And it was like 10 or 15 bucks for a large pizza. Yeah, but so man, there is <laughs> nothing like hot food. Late, like a late lunch hot food to get you through the dealer's room day. That was before we had started bringing our uh, hot cut, like our hot water kettle. Because mm -hmm. now we just hook up. Uh, we have like um like a ten dollar water kettle that you, like electric kettle, um, that will just keep a couple of refillable like gallon jugs in the booth, and we'll make like tea and instant potatoes, like uh, with beanie weenies or like cheese sticks cut up in them. Just rip up some cheese sticks, put on in the instant mm -hmm. potatoes. Yeah, and some uh, bagged, like, chicken. Like the, it's the canned chicken equivalent, but it's in a bag. It's like tuna packets. Yeah, like tuna packets, packets, but chicken. And we'll put that into the uh, mashed potatoes, and we'll make, like, um, kind of like a ramen bomb without the ramen. Yeah. And, gosh, that does so much um, to just help us get our second wind in the day. So the pizza truck needs to happen in a college town. That's fair. Or it wouldn't work. Yeah. I don't think it's going to work to begin with, but we'll see. I think it would honestly. I mean, a Little Caesars should do it. Yeah. Because they already have the... Well, they don't... That's their whole gimmick is they don't deliver. Yeah, but if they did, if you're on their route... I don't know. If you remove the key, I mean, because it's people like Uber Eats and stuff. Yeah, with that being a thing. See, that's that's already. Yeah, but you're monopolizing it to just your product, though. Oh, so you're saying don't do the Uber Eats and. Yeah, don't do the Uber Eats. To... Just have just your only option is Little Caesars and it's driving by your house. It removes the whole. I don't even have to think about it. It's like, well, I mean, the pizza truck's right there. <laughs> Or you could just do like the mailman and go and just sit on the street. You don't even have to be driving the whole time. Just sit there. 
That's true. And people could flag you down. It'll be like the milkman. <gasps> people will have scandalous affairs with the little Caesar driver. It's like, and then you'll have a baby that looks like a pizza. <laughs> What's going on? Mert 03. Mm. How do we... That first Deliver night? booze and cigs, you'd make a killing, <laughs> right? Um, oh my god, Christy, that sounds amazing. Let's just put this closer. No, there we go. What's that? No, that's only a 300 site. You can't ban? I can. Oh. It's hide user on this channel. Oh, but it's not an option. Hmm. How weird. That is weird. Boy, that guy has been persistent. That is the third account today that I've noticed. Oh? Yeah. What's going on? They keep saying the same messages. You know. What are they saying? Ah, just rude. Things. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. Well, that does kind of involve one of the messages. <laughs> Imagine going to the hospital and being told, ma'am, your pizza is a baby and your baby is a pizza. I'd be like, that baby's not going to make it through the night. It doesn't have pineapple it. on it, does it? And they're like, no, it's a pizza with bacon added. It's just what I always wanted. <laughs> okay. What? So what have you been eating? You've been eating babies, clearly. <laughs> So I think it's ridiculous that they don't put bacon on the pizza pizza. I am just saying that is madness. I mean, they do. You just it have to. Absolute, add it. complete, and total madness, Randy Kennedy. <laughs> what what world do we even live in? Time for dinner, in Connecticut. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Get really dark there. Husband and father charged with cannibalism of baby. <laughs> So the husband and the pizza guy <laughs> ate the baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I'm going to finish this bracelet. Yeah, Randy's like, I'm not going to hang out with you anymore. <laughs> this is go. weird. Wolf's hash can also be for breakfast with eggs added. Ooh. What's Wolf's hash? Oh, well, thank you, Star. I just got the notification for the stream. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's not the milkman anymore. It's the pizza guy. Um. What? <laughs> I want toast now, but have no bread. Oh no! Hey, do you want French toast for dinner? No, it's too much sugar before bed. What if we have a savory French toast and I use soy sauce instead of maple syrup? Sounds disgusting. It does, but it's not too much sugar. And what makes you think we're not going to eat until bed? Except for that's how our habits usually work. Okay. Neat. Hmm. We can spark on the menu, boys. So yeah, this is basically when we're not live streaming. Just getting freaked out. What about you? <laughs> this is exactly what Randy and I just, we just sit here talking to each other about eating pizza and. <laughs> I need something to soak up all this alcohol. We drove poor Daniel to drinking. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. It's super creepy that the mailman just sits out there like that. Didn't even take like, the packages. I know. Like, bro. What you got there? Clasps. Clasps. Do you want some ramen? That's warm. And we could boil eggs and put salty. in it. Well, do you want a salad? I'm not hungry. Oh. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> How are you not hungry? Because I ate a butt ton of cheese and some kippers. You did. You <laughs> ate an entire wheel of Gouda. I'm not even mad. Just impressed. I'm just impressed. What did you think of that Gouda, though? Uh, it's pretty Gouda. Pretty Gouda cheese. Well, should we, should we get it again? Or I mean, I'm not the one that put it in the cart to start with. Well, do you want me to get it again? I don't care. 
Or would you rather... I mean, I'll clearly eat it <laughs> if you get it. Well, but do you like it? That's fine. <laughs> oh my god. I thought you enjoyed the burnt pieces. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I'm just trying, because there's other cheeses that we could buy. Like, I could get not bourbon gouda. <laughs> Please eat. I'm hungry. Stop talking about food. <laughs> Ooh, I want grilled cheese. Do you Go want ahead. some grilled cheese? I don't want grilled cheese, but you can have grilled cheese. But I want to feed you. I'm not hungry. But I'm I thirsty. Wanna... Oh, you want the water? I was thinking tea. Hot tea? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I didn't know if you wanted me to sit it outside for a couple of minutes to make it <laughs> cold. Whatever you want to do, baby. There we go. Those are only four. That's five. Yeah. But those are only four on the side. <laughs> I guess it'll be fine. It makes it balanced. Does it? Yeah. As all things should be. Mm-hmm. This is my final circles. Got some Havarti. Sounds like fire <laughs> food. Look at beeping. I don't know what the beeping is. He's scanning stuff. Okay. Are we actually going to deliver it? Maybe. Okay, so. Put it on, Vaughn. I did put it on. <laughs> okay. And my Randy. Okay. Hey, Galen, how's it going? French onion soup. Oh, we have onions. Okay, so this is... Yeah, but we got sweet onions. I love sweet onions for onion soup. Sweet <gasps> Randy. What? I can defrost some of that beef, and we can have beans and rice and beef. That sounds great later today. <laughs> well, it's going to take a while for it to defrost. I kind of like this necklace. Just, yeah. just let me feed you. I'm not hungry. <laughs> so yeah, this is 100% exactly just what happens. Like, like it when the camera's not going, it's just me being like, you want to eat some of this? Yeah. And he's like, no. And I'm like, what about this? He's like, maybe. No, I'm not hungry. And I'm like, no. <laughs> just trying to place my jump rings is ordered. I'll also be making gorgeous things. All right on Rebel. But yeah, I'm going to come in just a little bit. Get those to lay flat. Kind of like it. It jingles. It jingle jangles. The dingle dangles do the old jingle jangles. Like, I don't know if you guys can hear. That's uh, something that's to keep in mind. The necklace part jingles. Yeah, it's those little metal beads. Ah. They, like, are hollow, so they ring when they mm. move. Oh. <laughs> jingle dangles, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Galen says just got back from the movie Dr. Doolittle. We're thinking about going good? and seeing that. Because I honestly saw nothing except for a Instagram trailer. We live under a rock. We do live under a rock. I, I like, like it here. Rock. I like our rock too. You want some grilled cheese? Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. You will eat it? Uh huh. I don't want to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat this stupid Duh. cheese. I'm not. I'll have consumed so much cheese today. Oh, yeah. I didn't I think won't that. I will pray for a week. <laughs> but if it'll make you stop, <laughs> I will okay. eat it. I'm going to go put tea on uh, and have a bio break. We'll be back. Randy, how do you want the camera? I don't care. Okay. He's all dead inside. It's, it's good. We're good. Everything's fine. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Oops. He's like, would you please? Just like, <laughs> no poops for you. Jokes on them that they think with this amount of cheese in our diet, we can pass a BM. It looks like you're coming out of the ceiling. Huh? Because it's upside down. Is it? There we go. It doesn't look like it's upside down. Oh. Yeah, never mind. Okay, I'll do that. Just your regular? Yeah. Okay. We are high freaking hilarious. 
Indeed, everyone should go and potty and get something to eat or drink or do something. Surely there's something more you can do with your time than this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Abby's coming back. Order pizza. I am weaving a uh, Byzantine. But apparently I weave it weird. So that's why it doesn't look like Byzantine until I stretch it out. I've made what we call units. Oops. And we're going to use the remaining open rings to connect them. I'm using square cut aluminum. I believe it's 16 gauge something. And EPDM rubber. So that's why I'm able to fold the, the rings back the way that I am. Can I make JPL? Uh, no. <laughs> that is actually a weave I don't do. Vaughn does. Mainly because she uses very tiny rings. And I don't like using very tiny rings. <laughs> what is a Christmas cake? Is that anything like a, uh, a fruitcake? Uh, JPL, that is a weave style. I'm not sure what it actually stands for. What time is the auction on Friday? That is a very excellent question. I don't know. Um... I think Mr. Daniel knows. I just work here. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, 4 p.m. Eastern to the patron exclusives, 5.30 to everyone else. That sounds right. We already did the giveaway today. Um, since we are no longer streaming on Thursday this year, or at least for the foreseeable future, what we are doing is we're doing long live streams on Tuesday, hence why we're still on. And at the end of it, once it's totally finished, you can leave a comment. If you leave a comment right now, it will not count. You have to wait until the video is finished and uploaded and then somewhere around the hour mark of next week we will go through and take the comments from this video and pick up pick a comment via the commentpicker.com that way it's totally random and this week a user by the name of Sharshar won and they were actually on when they won so it worked out well I believe the necklace is going for the auction on Friday. As well as the um, fairy house is also going up for auction. Uh, what was the giveaway this time? I believe it was whatever was in this box. We got some Glowforge laser cut uh, pendants, some polymer clay pendants, and two spools of parallel wire. 
And they're both upside down. Ta da! So that is what Sharshar won this week. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, right? Now Vaughn went to go take care of her chickens and make a grilled cheese sandwich and probably use the bathroom. So she will be back at some point. You guys are stuck with me till then. Thank you, I actually really like these colors as well. The very first box chain bracelet I made was out of these blue color square rings like this. And I left it in a hotel room in Tulsa. So yeah. <laughs> that bracelet will be going for sale on the auction on Friday. But they are stretchy. Yeah. Did you send a number for three minutes? Three? Yeah. Will you grab my phone? Where's it at? Should be. Yeah, it should be over there. It's not in my pocket. Okie dokie. Don't you don't see it? Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll be right back. Yeah, Randy uses his crimping pliers. How you doing, Abby? How's it been? It feels like it's been ages. There's a Cali cat for you. <laughs> Hello. Whew. Yeah, waiting for the stream to end before you post comments. Oh, thank you. Uh, you can still set it for three, unless you don't want your key to be strong. Strong like me. Oh, that's Stomach, Oh, goodness. Hey, Patricia, how's it going? That's a big old pile of... Necklaces. Mm-hmm. Hey, The happy little Sam dog tail wrecking everything. Ring box, show the ring box. Okay, that's enough. I'm gonna move the camera back to Randy. Yes, that was perfect. Gold. Gold is next. Sam, buddy. Oh, there you Chill go. out, man. He's like, you chill out, man. <laughs> Chickens are put away to bed. All right. Are you not doing grilled cheese? No. Did you potty? <laughs> yeah. There's, I don't know, we're streaming. I want to be here with everybody. Uh... Hmm. I've already done the pink. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can I buy a ring box like that full of rings of different sizes? Uh, they sell some stuff like that on the Ring Lord, I think. They're sample kits. But I don't think it comes with a box, but we got that at like the tool section of a hardware store. Mm, this hey, one. Suzanne. 
This one was from the jewelry section of Walmart, like a craft okay. jewelry. So it's Heiko Mills, a Myers Industries company. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is because these ones are the fishing. Yeah. Because there's a ruler on it and they've got the two things. Yeah. No, I think we bought this one just individually. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. From the from the tool section. Oh, from the tool section. Yeah. Because it has the removable for putting screws in. Hmm. Possibly. But any kind of tool like that, like box like that works. <clears throat> okay. So I have seven, enough for seven earrings of these and three earrings of these. Okay. And I have four metal colors that okay. I'd like to do. That's the silver, the copper, the vintage bronze, and then the antique copper. Ooh, it's <laughs> Okay. Okie dokie. What do I got? Three, six, nine, and ten. Who's having a case of deal? He said, yeah. Is that the same dude back again? Sure is. Uh, Mr. Daniel, if you go to block that guy, I think it's hide user from channel. That should not put him into timeout, but actually, like, ban them. If and you want. If not, I can do it. You are? Okay. <laughs> Indeed, I do have a system. In fact, I'm not even looking at the rings I'm reading or trying to stay up on comments. This is all done by feel and muscle memory. Gelata casserole. And this ring is broken. Sometimes the rings end up like this. Not really usable. Oh man, she's lagging bad. Yeah, there you go. So what I do in that situation so I don't end up picking it up again is I really mess it up. Because I used to just throw it back into the pile and keep going, but I found that I would constantly keep pulling out the same broken ring. So I was like, fine, I'll just bend it beyond repair. Though I will say, the uh, bend that it gets going on is really cool. Ooh, thank you. My Shenron mug. Mm -hmm. And I decided to go ahead and just have a meat and cheese stick. Meat and cheese no. stick. Damn, no. Oh, it's okay, buddy. You put, I, I have to be in your it's lap. Like I have to be. You're meat doing? and cheese time. Mm-hmm. Having some Earl Grey and some Irish breakfast. Mmm. Um, possibly. You could. They bake just fine. The anodized coating holds up just fine. Sam. <laughs> Is that where you have to be, buddy? <laughs> hey, little dude. I don't know if I would microwave these. This is kind of no, like putting it's metal. metal in a microwave. Though they might be talking about your meat and cheese. I don't know. Mm. There's a certain ring size. Freaking man. Mm. For beginner 
leave. Um, honestly, if you're going to like full on beginner, shower rings. Yeah. To just practice getting the concept down. Yeah. But um, I find that the 18 gauge 3 sixteenths, while it's a smaller ring, and can be challenging in that the project comes out smaller, it's you have to find a balance between a ring that's big enough to be easy, but thin enough to not be too hard to work with. Because with the quarter inch rings, uh, in some of the classes that we've, or uh, the 16 gauge, in some of the classes that we've taught, people have had a hard time yeah. uh, maneuvering the ring. So it's build your hand strength up before tackling the heavier gauges. I'll be right back. Uh, we make most of our bracelets to around an eight or an eight and a half. That way, um, if we're in the booth, it's a lot faster to shorten. Um, it's a lot easier to shorten a bracelet than it is to have to um, make it longer. Huh? It's blocking them correctly. Nice. Yeah. Sam, baby. There is this whole house. <laughs> Please find somewhere else to be. What is up, my little dude? What is up? Hmm? It's so hard being a Sam dog. What do you need? You got eye boogers. You just need attention. I love you. I love you, little man. Oh, is that a good scratch spot? Yeah, that's a good scratch spot. What's your favorite necklace length to wear? Uh, mine is probably around a 20 inch. Ooh, that's hot. But yeah, he just sits there staring at us all day. Wow. And his poor lump. The vets say that it's just fat, but... He got a big old titty. He's growing one for sure. Mm -hmm. They said it's not harmful. It's not hurting him. Yep. Um, usually whenever we're making chokers for in the booth, I'll make them at around a 16 inch length with a couple inches of extender. Good boy. Pull it down. When the dog bed's open, you could lay there. Instead of directly under our feet in the smallest table in the house. <laughs> He's like, mm, no, no, you silly. There's your sense of adventure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, the vet said he just old and chubby. You know, I was like, bitch me too, he ain't special. <laughs> Not old yet, hopefully one day. Okay, but uh, how do you think I should... I guess I'll do one in each and then see mm -hmm. what color I like best. I'm going to do the copper first. Or actually titanium because it was closer. Did you say titanium is one of your original? Um, that silver tone. Mm. Sam, what's up, buddy? I'm going to go hold him for a minute. Okay. Come on. I don't know if he's got dog food. I fed him before the stream. Damn it, Sam. <laughs> You're killing me, buddy. Yeah, I'll just squeeze in here before you have a chance to roll mm -hmm. up. Okay. Go flip this around. And we're going to have some Q&A time while I cuddle my dog because he is inconsolable. Come here. All right, you see, it's bubble time. Come on, Sam. I know. I wish I had two laps so I could snuggle both of you. Come on, Sam. You wouldn't have snuggled so bad. Oh, it's 
Sorry. He just wanted to hit his head on the table a few times. That was Z hitting his head on the table. He just wanted to hit his bubba's head like on the table. Like these dogs, a few times. you guys. They just need love, Don. Did you not get enough hugs when you were little? Hmm? Or ever? Or did you see me eating food? You're like, you got, got a cut of that for a pupper? How much longer will you be on? I have no idea. Probably, honestly, not too much longer. The dogs need attention, apparently. Which Z didn't want a thing to do with me until I tried to get Sam up here. Come here, little guy. Come here. Oh, he's a good boy. You're so good at jumping. Yeah, no, you're not, though. You're actually the worst at this. Ow. You have to pick his butt up. I know. Oh, there's that booty. There's that Sam. Oh, okay. How's this? Did, did you have something to say? <laughs> Are you happy now? No? Never? I'm a little chubby muffin. <laughs> he just wanted to come lay in my lap and heavy breathe. That's all. You know, that's fair. Me too, you ain't special. <laughs> okay, Q&A time. Do y'all have any uh, questions about anything that I might be able to help you with? He just sticks his little face in my arm. I guess I didn't cuddle him enough last night. <laughs> what? You didn't cuddle anybody last night. Oh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> no! <laughs> my dog would fit on my lap. He's a great Dane, way too big. If there's a will, there's a way. The dog will make itself uh -huh. fit. Whenever Harley was here, she was a lap dog. I had to sit on the floor, but she would still sit in my lap. Yeah, definite shade from Randy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my daughter's dog does that down her cleavage. Yeah. <laughs> hey, little guy. Okay. It's just grunting. Any questions yet? Mm, no. Are you going to do the lunacy pendant tutorial? Yes. Um, that is definitely on the list. What's a lunacy pendant? Um, the spirally moon pendant that oh. I've done. That was a Which, lot honestly, I should make some of those for the auction. Probably. Then <laughs> he just sticks his face back in my uh, USPS came, but no answer. Glue gun is in town. Ooh! Huh. Did it need signed for? Because he did not knock on our door. He did not. Let me go check outside. Oh. Oh, that's what time. It's probably way too late for... It's five, yeah. Yeah, post office is closed. Okay. Yeah, any tips or tricks for closing half Persian 3 and why? I just can't get it right. Um, my tip is to give it to Vaughn. Huh? Because I cannot close half Persian 3 and 1 either. Ah. <laughs> Should I provide a closing service? I don't know. Should you? Um, so, they, was there a thing on the door? There was not. Okay. And that frustrates me because I made eye contact with him as he was coming up the steps. <sighs> oh, the mailman came here not too long ago, actually. Mm -hmm. During the live stream. During the live stream. Held for pickup at carrier location. Delivered attempt today at... 11.47 a.m. Unfortunately, UPS couldn't. Okie dokie. Thanks for the info, Bob. Yeah, we'll stop by the post office tomorrow. Thank you so much, though. Maybe a video 31 closing. It was a while back. Yeah, it's been a minute. 
Okay, flipping this back around. Uh, the dog, oh no, the trouble's not you at all. It's our stinking, dinking postman. Um, okay. That's a really nice way of putting it. <laughs> stinking, dinking. <bro. laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I don't know why, I just, oops, I'm sorry. You don't know why. Um, I just prefer this titanium color to the silver silver. I wouldn't call that titanium. It's what it says on the... Hmm. Are those the same color, though? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it's pair of wires. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Oh no, what have I done? What, what did you, why would you have done this? What did I do? That looks cool though. How did I? Oh, that's how I did. Okay. Alright. If my calculations are correct, I can do this. Because we were awake at 11 something. Mm -hmm. You were downstairs. Yeah, sitting right here actually. Mm -hmm. Man, I do not get around much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good tea. It's got dog fur in it, but I think that makes it better. Mm. Okay. Oops. I'm just making all sorts of messes. Okay, so I'm coming in and find in the middle. Hey, Dury, how's it going? It's funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dog fruit does make everything taste better. Why is it the Nightbot links to your Nightbot YouTube? Oh, it's so that they can be uh, admins and post links, because otherwise you can't post a link. That's all witchcraft to me. Hmm. Mikhail says, I had a formal complaint so many months ago. They revealed that there's nowhere for me to go, so I have to remain here and hope that something turns up. Oof. Ooh, no, these are actually uh, just glass, but they are definitely a peridot green. I just think they're pretty, though. I don't know if I said grass or glass. I meant to say glass. What, did he figure out there's another bone in the house? Yep. I gotta go! <laughs> Give me up a cup of tea. Ooh! Jim just sent Red Kill a package. Oh. That's like, that's gifts from Sa Santa himself. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous. I hope I didn't get coal. I bet Jim has the best coal, though. <laughs> like, of all the people to get coal from. That's yeah, between you and Tim. <laughs> or Jim. Oh. I've been eat, drinking that monk fruit mm -hmm. uh, sweetener mm -hmm. in my tea. So much better with just real sugar. Right? <laughs> like, and it's only 30 calories. I'm just going to keep poisoning myself slowly with sugar until I die. Sounds like, like a plan. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Okay. It's my exit like, strategy. No, it's, I have like a real addiction, I think, to sugar. It's so good. 
Like, I just do lines of it. <laughs> well, the first step is admitting you have a problem. So if you never have admit a problem, you have I'm a problem, really good at it. <laughs> then you never have a problem. Oh jeez, Randy. That's how that works, right? <laughs> I'm tricking you. Huh? Poor dad thinks I'm charging the card again. I, I don't and know what that means. I forget how to make jewelry. <laughs> Why would you do that? I don't know. But I mean, it's my own tutorial, and I'm like, how, to, how the heck? How the heck did I do this? Fine, YouTube didn't tell me you were back. I saw your last post on Instagram and came here hunting for you. Did my first live stream ever. On Ooh. Oh, wow. Hey, Melissa. Here, I'll read this one. YouTube didn't tell me you were back. I saw your last post on Instagram and came here hunting for you. Did my first live stream ever on Instagram a few days ago. It was hard. I have to, come, have to get used to it. Right on. How did that go? I've never live streamed on Instagram before. Like, who did it? I didn't it? realize you could. It, uh, you can do. Honestly, I couldn't tell you how to. I've just seen people do it. But, like, how was the interface and stuff? Like, did you have a good turnout? Like, I wish I had watched it. I bet that would have been cute. These are earrings? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, I just had French vanilla creamer to my coffee. No need for sugar. Right on. Wait, you're drinking tea? Yeah. Okay. Because I was like, you don't put sugar in your coffee. Mm-mm. No, I just put in, uh, the, it's wheat cream, Italian, like sweet Italian cream, International Delight. So I don't put more sugar in the coffee on top of that, but it's still like 70 calories. And quite a bit of that is from the sweetener in it. But yeah, these are the, um, these earrings. Mmm, okay. Yep, it'll fit. You ever feel like the smallest doll in a babushka doll? My house, my it's made of cracks and photographs and we went it from a guy, he bought it off a guy, he bought it off a guy, his granddad left it to me. Speaking of seed beads, I think I'm going to use seed beads instead of silver. Mm. Do you think that'll look nice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm guilty of a very generous seed bead collection. Direct result of Jim. And I go in here. Dude! Oh no, what do you think of that? Is it too dark? I think if he'll lay down. Maybe we should just let him lay there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. No, that's not too bad. You like it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, B. It's <laughs> been a while. It has. Hey, Lydia. I never remember if you'd like to, if you prefer Lydia or Beth, or if I'm supposed to say your name out loud at all, so never mind. <laughs> I told you. Not to use my just let it go into the ether. Ah, oh, gotcha. Beth, gotcha. <laughs> How do I get in the gym club? He graces us with his, he just, I don't know. <laughs> it's, I don't know what I ever did to get into Jim's good graces, but man. 
It's very nice. It is very nice. <laughs> That's right, Randy. Right, you are, Kevin. Ouch. That's where I go for my chain melt tutorials. Hmm? That's where I go for my chain melt tutorials. Mm. I hate male artisans. Mm. Which, same. How do you close up version 3 in one? It just don't. Just don't? Shake a chicken and pray. Like. It's fair. No, it's. I mean, I've done tutorials specifically on it. I've linked people to um, CG Mail. Like Mailer Fong, I think was his name. The guy who did those really good mm -hmm. computer generated tutorials. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if his site's even up anymore. But it's it really is just use the biggest rings in conjunction with stretchy rings that you can and just keep at it. I don't know, I'd almost recommend not stretchy rings for that. It uh it helps. Okay. Because it usually uh, first off, you don't have to open or close half of them. Yeah. So you're not tired of weaving by the time you get there. And it just helps you to dif differentiate even more which ring is which. And then once you get used to that, then you can make the leap to solid metal. Because you'll be able to at least recognize the pattern just a little bit better. Like the, the stretchy rubber rings are almost the training wheels. Mm -hmm. And then you can take the training wheels off and... Well, I would say they're training wheels in the sense that you can really stretch them around and mm -hmm. yeah. they give you a lot more flexibility. Definitely. But I will persist. Mm -hmm. Watch your tutorial so many times with me and it is yet to turn out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. Don't include a rubber on your last string. Yeah. I mean you can't yeah, we're talking JPO. <laughs> well, now we're talking JPO. No, uh sorry, no. Just Jen's ping linkage. Um, I actually don't know if you can weave that with rubber rings. Do you have to open every ring? I think so. Then you cannot do it with rubber. Well, it's... Somebody else might do it differently than we do, and... So they're able to. That's true. Are those greed beads, greed beads you are currently using as the focal made of glass or ceramic? Uh, these are olive green dynamite, size 8, seed beads from Fire Mountain Gems. And then these guys. And then these ones are, uh, they're glass. Oh. Gravity works. You can do half version three and one with rubber. I don't think you can do JPL with rubber. It's right. a different weave. I'm gonna say I've done some half version three one bracelets for last uh, auction out of rubber. Yeah. Do we need to make more of those as well? Probably. <laughs> we sold everything. Sorry. Do you want me to switch over to that? No, it's we're doing good production. Um, we'll just burn through all the colors and one style and then move on. Okay. I think I'm still good on box chain. Yeah, I think you are. It's just so much quiet. Though truthfully, half person three and one person. Found a loophole to run JPL or to make three. Ah, got you, Diane. <laughs> no, that'd be, that'd be something. 
yeah, that's what I'm saying. The um, half version three and one stretchy goes so fast. It does. If you want to take a break from uh, Byzantine, I'll close them up for you. Okay. I'll double check to see if. We're... Yeah, and that way I could at least demonstrate in the video. Yeah. One more time. One more time. <laughs> What's wrong with us? I think we excellent music taste. Oh, that's fair. Alrighty then. Are you checking our stock? <sighs> what? Stupid. This isn't <laughs> so you've been making duplicates? No. No, we're okay. Are it's we? just one. Okay. Three. It's just three. <laughs> that you've made duplicates of? Yeah. Well. That's okay though. More for the auction. Er... Speaking of which. We are doing a live auction this Friday at 4 p.m. to our patrons. And then if there's anything left over, we will be live streaming it to YouTube uh, publicly at 5.30. And that's everything that we're making today. Uh, will be in the auction. Oh, hush puppy. Thirty-seven units. Yeah. Cool. I mean, colors are in the rainbow. Mm hmm. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, blue purple. purple. What was that? Five or six? Six. Six. What was the first number I said? Thirty-seven. And then we'll just fill in with uh, black to mm -hmm. for that remainder. Why you make faces at me? I'm thinking. Oh, is that your thinking face? Is it three units? Four. Like three duplicates. Oh, what number did you get? 2.222. 37 divided by six? Uh-huh. That's not, that's not right. Because six times six is 36. Uh -huh. So we do six repetitions. <laughs> is it six repetitions? It's six repetitions with a remainder of one. So we'll just have one black one there. How are your numbers totally different than mine? I mean, third, right? Like. 30, oh, what in the heck happened there? <laughs> Let's just. I mean, I'm not super mad confident in my math skills, but I think. <laughs> yeah. 6. Hey, 1. Mitch, how's it going? 6.16. Okay, yeah. Her, 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 her. <laughs> Like, I was so, like, not certain of my own math that I'm like, I don't know. I guess it's two. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Dang old dang away. Three. How many do you want to make? Six. One. Do you want to just make one for the booth and one for the auction? Because you know they... I'll make two. Because <laughs> you know they sell, like, super well. I don't know. Yeah. Dinga dinga dirty. No, that's all rust. <laughs> <laughs> you had to make me stop to double think again. Like, wait, what? About what? <laughs> it being rust. Uh, <laughs> Tempt me, sorry. <laughs> Didn't realize we had a rust back here. Oh no. Stop quoting Money Python. Ooh, Letty's here too. Oh, The Sims 3. Mother of Pearl. Red, orange, yellow, green? Yeah. Mm 
We're doing half Persian? Yes. Cool. Is cool that beans. not what we're going to be showing? How nope, to yep, do the that's thing? perfect. I love it. It's amazing. Don't ever change. How did Celebrate turn into Mamma Mia? <laughs> I don't know the song Mamma Mia. Me neither. <laughs> so I hear Mamma Mia and I go, ah, Mamma Mia. Oh no. Oh wait, we need the point one six. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. not forget the point one six guys. <laughs> So that's enough for two? Gosh, what? No. <laughs> because we should only need one black one for the two bracelets. Point one six. <laughs> oh, I just feel like crying. Why is this happening? Why? <laughs> Why would you do this to me? Uh, <laughs> I'm so tired. When my tea at? Cheers, y'all. Thanks for hanging out with us. Oh my gosh, it is perfect drinking temperature. <sighs> All right. So whoever needed, whoever requested this. We are doing half Persian 3 in one just for you. In a minute, I will get this started. Which... You don't have an issue with starting it. Like, I'm pretty sure you got that part figured out. I, know, I figured if you want, I can just uh, do the tutorial weaving. Like, the whole tutorial again. Live! By Bendai. Live and in New York. <laughs> yeah! It's Tuesday night. Yeah, we need to take the trash to the curb. I know. Okay. I need to empty the upstairs trash cans. They are getting full of trash. Just the one in the bedroom? In the living room. It's got the popcorn seeds in it. Oh, yeah, okay. I believe those are called kernels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're technically, I mean, they're no good anymore, but... Do you like these earrings? Yes. Mm, they're not nice. earrings yet, but... They're nice. Hey, Valerie, I haven't done tatting in ages, unfortunately. I really miss it, but it was something that, um, and I hate that this influences my production, but it didn't really sell that well, so I had a lot of fun learning it, um, but I don't a lot, a lot, I don't allow a lot of my production time to, um, to producing tatting projects. really is a shame because I did enjoy it. I want to try making some like uh, tatted wire. I do think would be really neat. Especially now that I can solder a bit. That would be really cool. Why are you making that face? I'm trying to figure out what tatting is. I made those uh, flower and snowflake looking ornaments for em embroidering onto Lulu's outfit. Mm -hmm. I, we were doing, I was doing it at Dragon or at uh, the camp, the Eclipse camping trip right before Dragon. We used thread. That and was you, two years ago. I don't that remember. was like three years ago. Sam, I appreciate your input. Thank you. <laughs> don't look at him. He's like, she's patronizing me, isn't she? Son of a bitch. Oh, I'm gonna, so I'm going to poop in your shoes. <laughs> you don't have shoes, Vaughn. No, he's going to poop in my shoes. Oh. All of them. Oh, hey, Rosenta. I haven't ate sugar for a month, and my brother bought all the cookies and donuts, so I ate all of them over two days, and I'm sick. Oh, no. I hear that. Yeah. Congrats on not on going without sugar for so long, though. Hey, Brissy. Did you see that Christmas from CSL Design has started doing wire crochet? Yeah. That was a wicked cool, like, trinket box that she had made in one of her videos, too, if I'm remembering correctly. Cool. I like those. Mm-hmm. Here's my 
Ah, uh, thanks, Daniel. Hmm? What's Ooh. Daniel saying? Make, oh, that they're lovely. Oh, they're lovely. And that's how I store my earrings, too, is I'll just thread the ear hook of one through the little loopy part uh, of another. I started doing my diet, and you did, and I'm down 35 pounds. Holy crap. Congratulations. Ooh. Uh, Brissy, the bidding for these start at 25 during our live auctions. So... Uh, these will be going up for sale to find their new home on Friday. I get to this. Well, so I was going to get since I'm in between projects right now. So whenever we're weaving half Persian 3 in 1, what's up? The black is going to be the starting. Ah, gotcha. Uh, we'll put two on the first. And none on the last. And we're making uh, these bracelets 37 units long. And a unit is one open ring with one closed on it. <gasps> Mitch just says, I bought my new alpacas today. They're only babies, so won't be home for a while. But we have named them Randy and Yvonne. Oh, oh we're alpacas now, Randy. Oh, I have achieved my final form. I do truly want to be an alpaca, though. Like... Don't I, know. I want to see pictures. <laughs> that's amazing, Mitch. That's, Holy that's shit, flattering. that's incredible. Von Pekka. <laughs> okay. Um, if the first and the last are black, then this kind of makes it a moot point that it's rainbow. So make the not make the last one black. Like, because I don't know why there's two, because it's six times six is 36, and it's 37. So everything's fine. There, now it's fine. Okay. We'll just hide this. I was expressing confusion at having two black earlier. Oh. Okay, so. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's zoom in just a little bit. So of course, or of course, um, I can work out of frame. And using the stretchy rings. Yeah, no, straight up padding really is some nice like muscle memory. It's fun. It's of all the uh, needle arts, uh, for me, it's the easiest to count stitches. How would you do that with wire? Mm, carefully. I don't know. I need to try it out. Okay, so we're hooking through. This is not the best color to be demonstrating how to start it. On red and black? No, with the black one being oh. black. Well, they said they had yeah. issues closing it, not opening it. Okay, so we just hook it on. Also, I don't know if just my brightness is down, but it looks like it's just eating the light. Okay, yeah. I still can't believe Randy Packa and Von Packa. It's amazing. Is it bad that my first reaction is, I bet Von Packa's going to be a jerk. <laughs> Why? Why would Von Packa be a jerk? Because Randy Packa's amazing. Randy Packa is going to be amazing. <laughs> Are you saying I'm a jerk? <laughs> yeah. You butthole? No, I'm not saying you're a jerk. I'm saying alpaca version of you as a jerk. Mm-hmm. 
You have an odd number for your rainbow. You could just shorten it. Don't add the black. One ring won't hurt the size much at all. Oh, we don't mind adding in the black. Okay. So you're going to explain your steps as you go? Mm-mm. No? Aww. Von Packa is so cute and tiny and loves cuddles. Randy Packa was the runt. Yeah, sounds right. <laughs> Two alpacas will be outside headbutting each other and pooing at people. <laughs> also sounds right. Yeah. Duh. There was a crazy alpaca lady in the village where I worked. Had to talk to her one day. She's crazy and sells broken pieces of china ornaments, which she insisted upon showing me. Right on. <laughs> Sounds like she's cut from the same cloth. As the alpacas? No, as me. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Hmm. Penny says, I'm very familiar with alpacas. Camels, too. So this is kind of exciting. Um, I think I'm going to go take horseback riding lessons. They poop with zeal. The camels or uh, the alpacas? Oh, both? I don't know. <laughs> I think pooping is... As, yeah, most mammals poop with zeal. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just remembering the Charmin bears. <laughs> Love shit. And it just, but, uh, I'm thinking about how Z always just kind of looks so terrified as it's happening. <laughs> yeah. He does look startled. Probably because we're watching him. If some, if I looked up and somebody was watching me to drop a poo, I'd be like, yo, what? I'd probably make the same face as Z. But, uh, does having the square rings change the ease or difficulty? No, no. we just think they're really pretty. Um, it does change the difficulty. It makes it more difficult because they're easier to scratch. Yeah, and they take up slightly more space inside the weave. Even but though... the light catches. Yeah, they're super pretty and it's worth it. But uh, yeah, we found a place in Springfield, Missouri that uh, it's like it's pretty expensive. It's like 50 bucks for a class, but I really want to go. But they will watch you poop <laughs> with zeal. No. I'm Randy, I'm being serious. <laughs> I know, but the fact that we've jumped conversations a few times is yeah, what I'm getting true. And that's, I was really worried, uh, Manaya, that I was like, because I'm like 230 pounds, I was like, I'm afraid that I'm going to be too heavy uh, to go horseback riding, because it's like, if I were a horse, I wouldn't want me on my back. <laughs> like, or, yeah, it'd just be like, yo, you heavy. Stop pooping on me. Stop pooping on me. But, um, it's it's been a lifelong dream, and it's like, I'd, I'd gone like on like trail rides like three times as a kid and but I was obsessed like I, I checked out every single book at the public library about horses and read it at least twice and like and it was I don't know horses are amazing but as an adult I'm kind of terrified of them because they're huge and I don't want to die um and I know now the depth of my ignorance um you know about like how to take care of a horse and just you know so uh bye neve thanks for hanging out and i was like you know even if i only go and take one class i want to I, I want to do this like so i think that's going to be a little bit before or a little bit of our uh, 15 year anniversary present is randy is going to take me to go horseback riding and he is going to sit in the van because he hates horses um sounds like a good anniversary <laughs> and then we'll go out like for sushi or something afterwards it's only an hour long class so no we're in the springfield we're having barbecue oh that's fair yeah I just like sushi and that it's food and tastes good if i pretend hard enough everything's like everything else <laughs> But no, whenever I lived at the campground, I actually wasn't allowed to ride the horses, but there were two horses, Lady and Baby. But I was allowed to uh, 
to muck their stalls. So I've mucked horse stalls for three years. I mucked horse stalls <laughs> happily. I just wanted to be around the horses. Like, that's how they do bite and have giant teeth. But it's I'm mostly just worried about... Um, <laughs> They do bite and have giant teeth, but so do I. So, just so do I, so it's fair. <laughs> no wonder they wouldn't let you ride. You kept biting the horses. <laughs> no, I think it was just that they didn't want to, I don't know, to get sued or something. I have no idea. But, uh... But no, I would love to have a horse and, like, be its friend and, like, pet it and brush its fur. Yes, oh. And then our friends in Tennessee had horses. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. And you bit their horses too. I bit their horses too. You didn't actually bite them. I didn't actually <laughs> bite their horses, that is true. Um, but no, it's. I don't know. Because I keep thinking, like, you know, for one day. Um, you know, the, the big lottery dream uh, is to have, like, land and to be able to have our animals. And uh, I'd really love to be able to, you know, have, like, a couple of horses and to know enough about them that if Maddie came over, like, I could teach her to ride or something or, like, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, ah, gotcha, Bev. But I just know so little about it that I was going to start with, like, I started with rabbits, and then I got chickens. But even with chickens, I started with banty hens. Um, so, and then I moved up to bigger, like, full-size chickens. Um, and so I'll probably start with little goats and then work my way up to, like, a proper-sized goat. Um, and I'd like a milk cow, if I can. Um, but again, I don't know anything about cows. Oops, are nuts. Yeah, we've heard that. We've heard, uh, I've taken to heart, if their enclosure won't hold water, then it won't hold a goat. So. <laughs> but it's, you know, there's nothing in this world that I feel like is worth doing that isn't work. So, or difficult, or trying, or, you know. Maybe you could start out with a Shetland, yeah. But, uh, I don't know, it felt like, um, a stepping stone in the right direction for if I'm ever gonna make those dreams come true, it's time to start working on them. You have a new roof on the house, too. I owned a big billy goat and they climb everything. Yeah. No, that's not gonna be for in this house, for certain. No, there is no um, place for that. This is when we have, hopefully, 20 acres in Tennessee. Okay, we are ready. Oh, my oldest son has a gorgeous Clydesdale horse. He's like a giant puppy. So sweet. Right on. Writing in my life when I was a kid, it was bareback. The cage girls and did a full on gallop and catch them. Yeah, nah. Carry up to 20% of its weight, including tag. That's interesting to know. Maybe I can ride a Clydesdale. <laughs> okay. So. So this is how you join half version 3 in 1. I'm holding it, like, with the, there's the flat side, and then there's the rounded side. So I'm doing this with the rounded side facing in, like, facing me, and then bringing my ends around, so it's flat side out. And I'm gripping this here. And you want to make sure that there aren't any twists. And I'm coming in, and if you can see... I want to go through the rubber ring behind our metal ring. Just like that. Which, if you do it in front, it doesn't matter, but that's where you want it to end up. And then I'm going to close. This is where it gets true. And so now, you see it's kind of slid in front, we'll just put it behind. And I'm going to rotate just a bit and see how the rubber rings, I want this rubber ring to be underneath the other one. So that way it's repeating 
the pattern. And so now for here, we're going to take this black ring and we're going to open it. And this is where having small tipped pliers really come in handy. I love my bent nose and my stepped nose for this because I can get in there and get a solid grip. And also I always open my rings where the left goes away from me. Um, and then she's just sitting out there. We're going to take this rubber ring and hook it over that black ring. I feel like we need to do a rainbow on white would be a really good so, like rainbow metal and white rubber because just for the camera it, yeah. it doesn't really pick up on the black very well okay i can do that well i'm thinking after i join this next one um we'll probably stop streaming for the night oh okay it's been almost four hours yeah my throat kind of hurts oh and i never put that meat out to defrost crap um Okay, so. Ooh, pilaf and veggies for dinner. That sounds nice. So did whoever it was that had trouble with half Persian 3 in one? Did that make sense? Are, are you still here? <laughs> Letty says, yep, have no clue how you did that still. Okay. okay. So we're coming around, putting the metal ring through our last rubber ring. Just like that. Okay, I'm going to do it again. A little more zoomed in this time. Let's fix that closure. It's amazing what the camera sees. And my eyeballs do not. My sight is really going. You'll get there. You'll get the click. Uh, the step nose pliers I get from RioGrande.com. They're like, not going to lie, they're like $6. Totally worth it. Okay. So, metal ring through the rubber. Do you want to use mine just because they're normal? Uh-uh. Okay. What's wrong with those? Nothing. That's to show that you can do it with normal ones. Oh. um, That's about the same size as the tip of yours. Here, okay. just bring it in closer. Yeah, okay. Um, so, again, we want all the metal lined up with each other mm -hmm. like that. So, that checks out. If it were like that you can see how that doesn't line up uh, I think they do ship internationally and so now we're going to rotate to the side just a bit so that we're looking at our rubber straight on and again you can see this ring is out of place so I'm just going to stretch and tuck it under so now it's sitting like so but we need this black ring to be going through this rubber so like how this one is. So I'm going to flip it around. And we're going to get in here and find the closure on this black ring. There we go. And we're going to open the black ring. And this is why I actually really like the rubber uh, for learning how to do this is because oops, we can take it. And I'm going to hook this rubber over this black ring. So I've just tucked it in there and it comes whoop, right out through there. And you can see it's really distorting that ring. And this can be hard to do if you're doing a really tight weave with solid metal. So until you get the hang of the placement. Um, ah, hey Lydia. And there we go. There's some half Persian three in one. Boop, boop, boop. Nice and stretchy. <laughs> oh, hush, doggies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, dopey. There we go. Alrighty, so. We'll see how many more times I can say okie dokie and all right before Randy comes back in. I know. What is he?
he doing on the porch? Randy? Yeah. Is everything okay? Yeah. Did you get the cat? Hmm? Yeah, you got the cat. <laughs> she does not look very pleased. Um, there are three steps to that closure, and I can do one and two. He, be he better not be chatting with the pizza guy. You don't see no pizza guy. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, keep at it. You'll get that. You'll, you'll get it. You will. Um, it's just, it is super frustrating. Um, I recommend getting two different colors of just plastic snap together shower rings and, um, practicing with those. So, oh, right on. Rich posted pics in the discord. Very cool. But, uh, we're gonna let you guys go. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We've had a fantastic time crafting with you guys. Um, fun pack. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I've got enough. Um. For these white rings. Mm -hmm. These are rubber. Mm -hmm. If they want, we can do rainbow. We might do a tutorial. Yeah, that's because, what I'm saying. Okay. And then sell it in the, the Friday auction. Sure. It's just that in the past, the white rubber don't they don't sell well out of the I gotcha. But uh, for tutorial purposes, yeah, might be a good idea. Um, but yeah, thanks guys so much for hanging out. Uh, yeah, 4 p.m. Uh, patron exclusive for the auction, and then 5.30 to everybody. Um, oh, uh, he might not have the listing up currently, but we've gotten our 18 gauge 1 8 inch from Joe in the past. We also get them from the Ring Lord, though, but they're a little bit more expensive. Um, and then Saturday's patron exclusive live stream, and then two, no, uh, Sunday's tutorial, which will be featuring some of the work of our patrons, um, who, uh, followed along with our Crescent Moon craft along, so that's pretty cool. Hey, Travis! All uh, right, on. Well, I'm glad you like our work, but we will see you guys, um, in our next video. So until then, check out all the links down below and all that stuff. But we love you guys. And until next time, happy crafting. Mm. Bye. Say bye, Randy. Bye. Why would you have done this? <laughs>